Okay. I should be all good. I'm going to um, just check the test there, test the uh, microphone audio real quick. So you might hear double for a second. Because, like, I did some tests before, but you know, you never really know until you hear on the stream, I guess, huh? Because, like, I did some tests before, but you know, you never really know until you hear on the stream. Alright, sounds good. Um, so I'm doing something a little different. Uh, let me just see if this. Yeah, okay. I'm trying something different. I usually stream at 1080p. Uh, however, there are some hurdles I have to go through to do that, and some possible um, give or take situations, right? Uh, for one, I I recently acquired the the problem of stuttering footage, um, and I'm hoping by downgrading to 720p that that stuttering will go away. Uh, I'll have to see in the stream archive, uh, but hey. That's what we'll do. Let's turn down the, the music and sounds real quick. 4%. Um, so, I'm on the Kikor SMP server. Uh, recently, Minecraft 1.13 came out. And uh, we've recently updated to 1.13 because it came out. Uh, so, there's some interesting uh, interesting things. And I, uh, I went over to my zombie farm that I made oh so long ago. It's got a lot of zombies backed up in there. But what I noticed is that they're not, um, they're not swimming up to get me, and I think that's because of the water mechanics. I don't think zombies, uh, I don't think they like to, um, jump no more. I don't think they, if they're in water, they like to sink, right? I think that's the way it works. Um, so I'm gonna try to adjust this real quick, because it would be nice if I could just get some quick XP and I don't want to go all the way to the end. If I just break that sign, will that make them come up to me? I think it might. I think they... It's simpler. Things are simpler now, guys, with this one update. Water now just pushes up things regularly, like items, and I think mobs... I don't... Okay, I still think zombies will sink, but... Oh, that, that does pose another problem, doesn't it? It's down there. Hmm. Okay, let's quick... Let's uh, take a quick detour and light this up. This is what I was, what I was uh, planning on doing today, but I'm gonna light this up and... Yes. Oh, this is an interesting angle. See that? Okay. Stop. Stop. We got a zombie Congo line going. Uh, so it's supposed to to fish out all of the baby zombies in that area, and all these zombies are supposed to go over here and then get taken up uh, through this guy right here. But that didn't happen. Um, I'm not sure what the easiest way to fix that would be. I think maybe we can break the sign might have been bad. Hang on, let me grab the sign that went up here. Did it go in? Oh, probably went into the chest. Okay, I'm just breaking my way through here. It's a good thing I've got Depth Strider and that the 1.13 swimming mechanics are faster. Where'd that sign go? Hmm. <laughs> I need that sign. I need, I need dos signos. Put it there, and that's the same problem we were having. I need another sign. I, I have no idea what happened to my other sign, but I broke it. And then what? Oh, it probably went down here. Ooh, okay, okay. It probably went down to the um, baby zombie shaft, in which case should be in here. I was really hoping that would have worked. Hmm. Put that in the site. Why, but I'll take it. Okay, uh, so let me try something else then. Right. Oh, sign right here. That's for me to place in lava. We're not gonna do that right now. You silly moron. Let's take the sign down. And place her right there. Let's see if that helps. Hmm. You know what? I think, I, I think I found a solution. What if we break those blocks? And they just have to go under there. And drown. Found the sign! Don't know how it got there. That's probably because there's a current against it, I guess. I guess it doesn't float if there's a strong current against it. Um, but we don't even want... Like, this thing is not even necessary anymore, so we can block that off. Picked up that sign. Good save, right? 
because everyone needs signs nowadays. What is this? This right here? Uh, okay, so let's bridge our way out over here. Like so. Break that. And look at that. We have just enough blocks. Oh, I forgot to take out the torches. Well, I guess I should take them from back to front. So what I'm going to be doing today, despite what it looks like, I'm going to be building a wall. Uh, veterans of my series will know that I've been working on this wall for quite some time. And I'm going to work on it more. I recently rang it up in the, uh, in the to-do list, the randomized to-do list that I do on my videos. And it's got a lot of work that needs to be done. So I figured I'd at least try to get some more progress on that. Uh, let's just do this so no lobs spawn. <laughs> some two ways to make a slap. So now if we head down here... Should be seeing some zombies. Oh, they're still getting caught. Are they are they underwater now? Because I'd like to turn them into drowns if possible. It'd be cool if I could just turn this thing into a to a drown farm. Let's see. Let's go down here again real quick. Once they're in here, they need to get underwater again. Maybe that will help. Oh, I just waterlocked that block. Is that going to be bad? No, that's fine. Water locking is going to take a long time to get used to. It's really cool, though. Guess what I can do? They're not going to jump anymore. That's the, the big difference. So hang on. Let me place some water. I already got some water right there. Some lava, um, right here. There we go. Perfection. Let's block those off for now. Um, okay. Did one of them turn into a drown? I thought I heard it.
Let me block that off. But let me just block this off. Block this off. Uh-oh. What's going on down there? Ah, we got a plumbing problem. Right, 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 right. Okay, so I need to... Let's kill these guys real quick. Looting sword. Out of my way, please. And they just keep on coming. I'm pretty sure this chest can be superfluous, but I'd like to keep it, if possible. There's just another one comes, though. Just like that. The water is not getting all the way over to them, which is bizarre, I might say. I mean, if we have another water bucket, though, we just place it down, right? And we have another waterway over here, infinite water source. So we can place it just like. this. We'll block it off. And then we come down here. Yeah, we can whack them still easily. Yeah, so then we can fit a couple more zombies in at a time. They should convert to drowns. Yes, ideally we'd have a much bigger area, but I'm not too worried. Oh, but is the current going the wrong way now? Hmm. Oh, hello there. Sorry, I didn't mean to disturb your slumber. Excuse me, can you get back down there, please? All right, so this one has to go. Did I get a shell? What did I get? It wasn't a shell, whatever it was. Probably rotten flesh. Let me get down there. Well, I need to kind of eat. Yeah, so we're gonna be building a, <laughs> we're gonna be building a wall today, despite my um, tomfoolery over here. And I'm gonna need to get some stone for that. So we're gonna do mining and building. A mining and building edition of Pat's Streams. This looks like it's working out alright though. We'll be getting some um, drowns and stuff like that. I'm going to be digging around this area so I can check back on this later. But right now, I'm on, I'm on the need for stone. So let's get stone as fast as we can. Uh, there's another cave over here already looted by myself. But there's still stone here. So clearly I didn't fully loot it. What was wrong with me? Why didn't I just grab all the stone? I mean, I knew I was working on the wall. So, I should have just grabbed all the stone while I was here. I also have a shulker box that should uh, help stuff. What I'm going to do, though, is drop out some of my crap. Like that, that. I kind of want to hold on to that so I can repair what I broke over there. Oh, carrot. That must have been what I dropped earlier. Or picked up. Don't need a coal ore. Goofy dude. Uh, let's craft that. Don't need 53 round flesh. Let's drop that. Grass blocks. I'd like to keep grass blocks because we're going to need that for the wall. We do a little bit of terraforming around here. Not much, but a little bit. When need be, we shall terraform the heck out of that wall. Okay, then we'll collect stone. What, actually, what I'd like to do real quick is just put stone all over my inventory. So the only thing I can pick up is stone when the strip mining. I, um, I also plan on making a really good strip miner on the next, uh, on, on the next Cake Horror SMP season, because Cake Horror SMP season one will be closing really soon, really soon, um, within a week, actually. It's weird to think about. This SMP's been going on pretty long, so I might say too long. Nah, it definitely wasn't too long. It was um, a very adequate amount of time, I'd say. Uh, a lot of builds happened, and a lot of, uh, uh, mishaps and goofs happened, and, uh, what more can you ask from a season one of SMP? From any season of SMP. Is that gravel? It's gravel. It's hard to tell what blocks are nowadays with the textures sometimes. Don't need that right? In fact, I could just drop those. Get out of here. No one needs you. Am I picking up gravel? How, am I, how did that happen? Oh, 
But yeah, it was a good season overall. A lot of fun. Uh, it was kind of it's kind of a special season for me because uh, it it really did act as like a creative outlet, if that makes sense. Because um, like before that before that season, I uh, I didn't like building too much. I I was also under the impression that it's just like okay, I'm just you know that's I'm not that kind of guy. I'm not the, the building kind of guy. I'm just I. I, uh, in fact, I wasn't like really survival kind of guy at all. Uh, but after practicing a lot and watching a lot of SMP videos, I was like, you know what? I actually like my building. And um, kind of when I got into that mindset of liking what I create, uh, just as you would with any art field, things magically got better uh, and became pretty awesome. Just like this song. Uh, so yeah, this, this season one, like, I think like around episode eight or something like that is when I started realizing like I really like my builds and uh, and when you like the stuff you're working on it suddenly everything else seems cooler and I know that from both experience with Minecraft as I said and also uh, videos on YouTube when I'm working on videos I actually want to make kind of like SMP videos or uh, the main channel videos and stuff like that I, I have a good time doing it and it, and every and other stuff starts becoming more fun too, uh, just like watching videos, like watching your videos and stuff like that. That becomes more fun when you know it was a video you wanted to make and stuff. So um, I don't know where all this is going, but it is some. Basically, this SMP is uh, it's pretty cool. It brought something out in me in Minecraft that I didn't know I had before. So I I've got to give it all the credit I can. Let's swipe up this water over here because we reached another lava space. We might be able to find some late game diamonds with where we're digging. Not really the goal, but oh, this is one of those. Oh, and okay, this that wasn't too bad. Got some good songs here. I really need to start adding more songs to this playlist because uh, I've heard uh, the old ones quite frequently. I thought about possibly removing some, but I also feel like, no, I shouldn't. <laughs> I feel like adding to it is better than removing others. If I'm getting tired of hearing the same songs, then I, you know, I don't want to necessarily not hear these songs ever again, so I'm not going to remove them, but I think um, adding them would be nice. <laughs> uh, shout out to KMSYY, who thinks he is a wise guy. Just do a quick little, quick little band there. That's one thing that's kind of cool about uh, Twitch chat. <laughs> you get a bunch of uh, uh, run bys. What do you call it when someone a walk by, a drive through? That's what you call it. Get a bunch of drive throughs who uh, just leaving their ultimate wisdom, such as uh, well, I probably shouldn't read it out out loud. Oh, the message lead anyway, so <laughs> I don't remember what it is. But um, it was something along the lines of. Uh, drive by <laughs> drive through wisdom i don't know what else to call it uh you know what's funny is, is i do see those kind of things quite frequently uh both on, more so on youtube i don't see them on twitch very often but uh i guess i guess there is some on twitch but yeah it's it's, it's you can't help but wonder what it's like in the mind of someone who does that because you, you try to understand motive and stuff like that ultimately it's just troll and and that's one of the things scientists can't explain, is trolls. Scientists, to this day, are still working on how to figure out uh, the minds of trolls and whatnot. I don't know why I'm grabbing this red so I really don't need it. Especially don't need this lapis. What am I doing? The SP closes in less than a week. I need stone, darn it. I don't need all this materialistic stuff, just stone. Back in my day, uh, stone was the only uh, ore out there, so... You know. Speaking of, you know... You guys know this game? It was called Metroid, and it's uh, it started something quite amazing. I've recently been playing Metroid Prime Trilogy, uh, which is the the Wii version of the Metroid Prime games one through three. Uh, I was specifically playing Echoes uh, on Hyper Mode. Hyper Mode is cool because it's extremely difficult, <laughs> but it's actually uh, it's not like the most difficult thing. Um, the bosses certainly become more difficult to work around. Is it even worth grabbing these? What the heck am I going to use diamonds for? I guess I will. I don't have my um, 
my fortune pickaxe with me because I lent it to Owlton and I forgot to get it back uh, before before we left. But I guess what are you gonna, what are you gonna do? Uh, anyway, yeah, been playing Metro Prime Echoes. You know what's just a freaking awesome boss fight in that game is that guy Quadraxis. There's this boss fight called Quadraxis, and he uh, it's basically like this this uh, mecha spider mechanism, which is pretty dope. And he has these these legs where you can turn into your morph ball and ride up and stuff like that, and uh, shoot off them to to crawl on his floating head and whatnot. It's so hard to explain, but it was just so intuitive. Like it, uh, it allows you, it, it, it lets you use like every ability you've learned in quite a while in like the last, uh, the last light stage and dark stage. And you learned a lot of stuff then. You learned, um, you learned, uh, Spider Ball and you also learned, uh, the, the Echo Visor. I'm not entirely sure if it allowed you to use, um, what's it called? Um, Screw Attack. So maybe there's a bit of a missed opportunity there. But every time I fight that boss, I just have a lot of fun. It's also really difficult. And I don't know why. Uh, I have a big gripe with um, not difficult, non-difficult bosses. Uh, I mean, there's there's context to them, right? Like in the in the first in the first stage of of a game, you're gonna want a relatively easier boss fight. Uh, but sometimes sometimes you know it's just like. Hey, you had a really cool concept here, but I only got to deal with the concept for three seconds because the boss was so easy. And I get that away with, like, I feel that with a lot of Mario games. And I understand why Mario games have to have easy boss fights because they're going for the, the biggest demographics and stuff like that. Um, it's just for me personally, when I, after I play a, one of the Mario boss fights, a lot of times it's just over so quickly and I'm like, that was a lot of fun, but it's just so fast. Like, because Mario has got a lot of cool concepts for the boss fights and stuff, so... I don't know. It's just something something I th I've thought about. I'm quite interested in boss fights in general and game design. Well, I guess I should say I'm quite interested in game design in general. It's something I I discuss quite frequently. <laughs> Anyone who knows about my channel would know that I talk about uh, game design to the point where it annoys people. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> uh, it's just very intriguing to me. The the whole ins and outs of of of. Uh, Verity and and what makes a game have good design and stuff like that. I'm all into that stuff And boss fights are such a big part of that I don't think people realize how big of a part boss fights play in uh, uh, The overall game design But they're pretty significant, you know, they're they're what they're what uh, stop you from progressing the game and Their sole purpose is to stop you from progressing in the game and not every game aspect is like that. You don't like. There's a lot of enemies, but they're not sole. A lot of times, their sole purpose is not to stop you in your tracks, such as uh, boss fights are. A lot of times, it's just to fill in some space or have some fun game uh, fighting mechanics and stuff in between. But the boss fight is like, okay, hang on, let's make them struggle. It's just the idea of, of purposely trying to make someone's Dark Souls in it a bit, right? Like, we have to make them struggle, like, right here and stuff like that. It's just kind of cool. And then you get cool things like this. You hear this music. This is a mini boss fight in The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. Um, boy, is there so much awesome potential for music in boss fights because it is the peak of, of um, intensity in video games, right? There's no moment. There's, well, there's usually not moments that will be as intense as a boss fight. So you get to have that really awesome, intense music playing and uh, some uh, cool sceneries, intense sceneries. Gosh, bosses are cool, you know? They're just cool. I'm not sure if I can even do it justice by talking about them, but they're really cool, basically. And I really like them. One of my favorite things to do in Mario Maker, um, you know, that game where you make Mario levels and stuff like that, the game that's still pretty dang popular and I'm very surprised it's not for Switch and it wasn't even announced for Switch yet, because uh, that that game was definitely one of the more popular Wii U games and streamers it was it was really big with the community you know streamers would stream that game quite frequently I bet if I looked up right now uh, Super Mario Maker there'd be a lot of people still playing it maybe not a lot but you know there's at least some people with a basic viewer base let me search real quick Super Mario Maker 
How many people are playing? Yeah, there's there's uh, six six suggestions. Top one has 400 viewers, so and the next one is 100 viewers. So it's like it's really it's really good with the community. Uh, anyway, <laughs> just want to check that out real quick. Uh, and yeah, if some for some reason, whatever reason, they didn't think it was a good idea to port it over the Switch yet. I think it's because there's a little bit of complication with uh, transferring from a a um, what's it called a gamepad. The Nintendo GamePad to the Nintendo Switch, um, even though they're very similar, there still are some some hardware differences for sure. Uh, for an example, at Mario Maker, you can use the GamePad while you use the big screen. That is no longer an option on the Switch. Uh, disappointingly, it's no longer an option on the Switch. Holy crap! There's three three baby four babies. Where y'all come from? Yeah, let me eat, okay? I don't have the best armor right now. I, like, never carry around a chest plate. I always stick with the wings. Just that's a little more challenge, you know? Not really. I just love flying. Um, where, what was I looking for, too? I was kind of looking for my looting sword. I guess it's not, like, super important. Um, but it would be nice if I could pick up some levels. Of course, looting swords don't help with levels, so I don't know what I'm thinking anyway. Interesting. It's not even a spawner. It's just four baby zombies coming after me. What was I talking about anyway? Um, just talking about boss fights, talking about Super Mario Maker. Ah, the hardware differences. Yeah, for some reason the Switch you can't um, you can't play with both the TV on and the game the the Switch gamepad. It's not really a gamepad if it's the actual console, is it? But it's just bizarre to me because it feels like a, like a step down. Um, granted, not a lot of people used the Wii U's two screens to its fullest potential it's still just disappointing that it's not even an option now so even if game developers do want to use it to the fullest potential they can't and Nick can Nintendo is just the king of making things with lost potential so maybe you know maybe like we don't even want to do that we just want to keep it simple stupid the the whole kiss phrase keep it simple stupid make it so that the switch can only be played on one screen at a time and I'm sure that would affect Mario Maker a little bit but not that much not, 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 not with a little shoe shine, you know. You can, you can fix anything up. So, I'm just surprised they haven't uh, announced that yet. Now, what's really interesting is that uh, Nintendo is still trying to convince people. I mean, obviously they are. That's not the interesting part. But Nintendo is still trying to convince people that they're uh, still in the mobile game as far as mobile systems go. When anyone, I'm pretty sure anyone could, uh, could realize that. They cannot keep that up for very long. I mean, so they, they have the Switch coming that came out, and that's that is actually mobile. I just realized I might maybe I should be picking up iron. Oh, no, 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 let's not pick up iron. We're here for stone. Uh, yeah. So like, they're almost competing with themselves having the Switch being a mobile thing and having the 2DS out, or the 3DS. But of course, they made a new 2DS recently. No, it wasn't recent. That was like last year. Guys, I'm stuck in the past. I'm sorry. Uh, but they, they, they're kind of competing with each other, right? Because who's going to want to buy a 3DS when uh, the Switch is far more powerful and has uh, far more modern games, uh, graphically <laughs> graphically more appealing games for sure. And I'm not saying that's all I care about, but that's all, all some people care about. Uh, hey, another cave. So it is interesting. I wonder how long they can keep up the whole 2DS thing. It obviously can't keep it up for too long. Eventually, here's the deal. Smartphones came out, right? That's going to wipe the floor. That, wi that wiped the floor with, with everyone. Uh, that became a natural natural phenomenon and stuff like that. Well, it wasn't natural. Man-made phenomenon. Uh, and and rightfully so, right? It's a really cool invention. Um, if anything's going to become a phenomenon, it makes sense that the, the cell phone is. But uh, because this, like, before the cell phone was out, though, uh, but I mean, by that, I mean the iPhone, right? The smartphone. Before they were out, uh, DS's were a thing, and DS's were very, very popular. I remember, uh, it was like 50% of the kids I met when I was younger had a Nintendo DS, uh, or a Nintendo DS Lite, or something like that. Um, and so, and that was, and really, like, that, that's, that was, like, the peak of the mobile gaming market. Uh, no system... No handheld system has sold as much as the Nintendo DS. Um, 
and they kept going with this 3ds thing but as the 3ds came out smartphones started becoming a thing and more popular and th same thing with like ipods and stuff and they could all play games and they could play games at a very cheap price even though they're much worse games <laughs> far far worse games uh we are heading towards a more casual gaming market in general so people are going to see uh like pokemon right they're gonna see pokemon as the game and like gosh that looks really cool you can catch all these pokemon and go on this adventure and stuff but if we look at this app pokemon go i could do the same thing except it's free so and like obviously what's going on here Obviously, you and I know, or maybe you don't know, but I know, <laughs> I know that, uh, there are farm, like, the Pokemon game, like, Pokemon Go is not the same thing as Pokemon, right? It's not the same game. Uh, it's a new cave, that's what this is. So, when I would look at it, I'd be like, okay, yeah, I'd way rather play the actual Pokemon game, it just comes down to price, but how can you compare any price to free? And so many games on the Apple... Uh, the, on the App Store or other Play Stores and stuff like that, uh, when so many of them are free. It's like, how, how do you actually compete with that, right? And then Nintendo is even coming forth with making other... Ooh, excuse me, didn't mean to do that. Ooh, didn't mean to do that. Sorry about that, pal. Didn't mean to disturb your slumber. Go back to sleep, please, as I murder you. There we go. Yeah, so, so Nintendo's even jumping on the ship with uh, making a lot of mobile games for phones themselves. Um, some of which have gotten really popular. Pokemon Go, obviously, was another phenomenon. <laughs> I mean, just imagine, mix Pokemon with smartphones. That's that's just the recipe for, for popularity, right? Uh, so Pokemon Go got really popular. Um, and then even games that weren't um, casually popular, right? Popular among the general public. Uh, like Fire Emblem Heroes still has a pretty decent uh, fan base behind it. So Nintendo is, is cashing in on this mobile hype on other people's systems aka the smartphones. So like it's like how long, right? How long can they keep up this 2DS stuff when they themselves are working on the mobile platforms and making a lot of money doing so, I might add. Fire Emblem Heroes, uh, well, Pokemon Go obviously made the most bank with uh, their, just because it's so popular. But Fire Emblem Heroes, for how popular it is, it's crazy how much money they make. And I saw the figures a while back because they, they released it for the monthly, I think, or maybe it was quarterly or something like that. Or maybe it was the whole year, I don't remember. But uh, they were pretty impressive for the, for in apps, basically. So Nintendo, here's the deal Nintendo knows how to make games, they're a good games making company. I think uh, almost anyone can agree with that. Uh, that Nintendo Nintendo has a lot of other problems, right? Uh, with with specifically like making powerful consoles and stuff like that, um, appeasing to the casual audience, and uh, getting rid of their Japanese traditions uh, that seem to. Well, I only say the Japanese because you know the retro gaming market was Japanese, but uh, what was I saying? Yeah, getting rid of all traditions—they're terrible at that. But one thing I think most people can all agree on is that Nintendo makes good games when it comes down to it. Their games are fun. I mean, you got freaking Mario, you got freaking Zelda, you got freaking Metroid, you got Star Fox, you got Pokemon. Those are fun games. You know, even even if they're not necessarily for you, I think most people would acknowledge, most people with, with um, uh, some form of gaming knowledge would acknowledge that it's, it's you know, it's, it's not a joke. They do good stuff, right? Uh... Really though, on the system end, they they have have sucked quite a bit on on certain occasions. Uh, I'm not hey, I'm not like one of those Nintendo cultists, right? I'm I'm okay with calling them out when when they need to be called out. Uh, and right now, I'm kind of calling them out. They they uh they make crappy systems sometimes. Um, the Wii U, in all honesty, was pretty. I I can't call the Wii U crappy, but. It's just it was it was the new modern system, and it still had all these old quirks that were really frustrating. Didn't have very big virtual console and all this stuff. Four more diamonds, by the way. Uh, tell you what, if any of you guys got guesses for how many diamonds this is gonna be, let me know, and then we can we can see see who wins. You win, you win, you win the satisfaction of a victory over uh, the rest of the people who guess, which is probably no one. So that's obviously gonna get you guys going, get your gears gears moving. I found a mine shaft right here. Maybe we can find some goodies in here. 
But yeah, so basically Nintendo's good at making games, not so great at making systems. Specifically, their handheld systems are becoming harder and harder to justify uh, as even smartphones... Don't have any blocks. Okay. Don't really want to deal with... Well, I don't want to do that either. <laughs> don't. Uh, I don't want to deal with those guys right now. Uh, I don't like dealing with cave spider spawners very frequently. I'm also out of torches. Hmm. Maybe it's time to go up then. Maybe we got enough stone for now. And we need to head up. Uh, but yeah. Basically, smartphones could do like 1080p now. Right? I think there's some smartphones that could do 4K. I think that's like kind of a new thing. But I'm pretty sure some smartphones can do 4K. Um, yet here Nintendo is with their, with their most modern handheld right now clocking in at less than 480p. <laughs> a little less than 480p. So, how do you compete, right, when your systems are just that out of date? The, the 3DS and 2DS and stuff really is an out of date system. Uh, we have the hardware to make, make smaller smaller handhelds now, or smaller um, gaming machines and stuff, but it just doesn't happen with Nintendo. So, my theory is that this year, possibly, this year or the next, they're going to announce the end of production of uh, the one and only uh, Nintendo 3DS, which has been around since like 2011, I think. Wow, it's a long time. 2011, that's seven years. It had a good run. Seven years a good run. It never did. I think there was at no point in time where the 3DS had exceptional sales, but within the course of seven years, it was pretty consistent, right? I'm pretty sure. Uh, that it was just cons it was being bought at the same rate for the most part uh, almost all seven years I think it was rocky at the start I think it was really rocky if I remember correctly uh, but I'm pretty sure for the most part it had relatively consistent sales so that was impressive uh, so it had a good run for sure and it's time for it to go but I think there's not going to be a handheld successor I think the switch was their ultimate bailout right uh, I don't mean that in a bad way at all uh, that's you know, good for them. I think it is the, the 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 freebie they were looking for to get out of this mobile market, yet stay in it. Because um, having the combined mobile with non-mobile, it's just a great idea. It really is a great idea, no matter how you slice it. Uh, Um, I'm gonna need to get some water real quick. I, I don't have to go anywhere. It's right next to me, but I don't want to just hear make you guys hear me chugging. All right, so I'm gonna mute for a second. Nobody freak out, okay? I'm alive. I'm well. And if you don't hear from me in five minutes, then you probably have better stuff to do. fret i told you i would not leave you and i would not lie to you unless it was very important for me to do so or if i didn't care that i was lying to you <laughs> it's kind of mean i don't lie though trust me because <laughs> that's reassuring uh because obviously a person who's uh um not a liar would say trust me okay i mean that's kind of true but but not that a liar would ever say, trust me. Okay, whatever. <laughs> the joke's dead. Let's move on. Uh, let's grab all the stone and all the stone in here. What? Yes, there's more. There's more. You guys saw me get it. And let's make as much of this stuff as we can. And the rest will have to wait inside the box until we have another opportunity to clear out our inventory. Let's drop this diorite and this andesite and the uh, 
I was going to try to think of a medical disease that sounded similar, but I couldn't think of any in time. I am not majoring in biology, so I do not blame myself too much. Now, Bombastic is here. Not here. Bombastic. Someone I know. He is majoring in biology. So, like, if he didn't know, I'd be like, Bombastic, get on your game, my dude. In fact, I could message him right now and say, Hey, do you know what uh, medical condition rhymes with andesite and diorite? Then snap his fingers and say, boom, it's right there, son. I go, okay, great. Homie. So I call him homie all the time. That's that's our lingo. It's not our lingo. Okay. Uh, so we're reaching a wall here. We're going to take a turn pretty soon. I wonder how many hours of this has been done on stream compared to how many hours of this has been done off stream. That's a good question. Hmm. So I know I've spent a lot of time listening to podcasts specifically, and I don't think I've listened to podcasts <laughs> on stream. Not typically uh, the grandest of entertainment. I'll tell you what, let's, let's not even bother going up this landscape since it's so short. Let's just break the blocks out underneath. I don't like having really small segments that are slightly elevated over others. We'll do that and break this, because otherwise we just have to go down again. It's a big hassle. It takes more blocks, actually. But now we're, we're sticking on this for a little bit more time. We got some awesome Spike Mandrill going on right now. MNX has some fantastic music, if I may say so myself. Of course I may. You know what is interesting? How we come up with phrases like that, right? If I may say so myself. It's usually in the terms of bragging, right? So maybe I'm just weird and I don't use it that way. Maybe I should only use it for the terms of bragging. But then again, that would also encourage brag. And is bragging really a good thing? That's actually a good question. Some people would actually probably say yes. And some, a lot of people would probably say no. But I think... I think... They're a standing argument could exist for someone saying bragging is good. I know there has been a bigger movement for um, uh, self-love and stuff like that as of the last few years. So maybe maybe people find bragging... I will say I personally don't think bragging is a great thing. I don't, I'm not particularly fond of narcissistic behavior, but there's a lot of different uh, reasons for that. Stuff I won't get into here. This is not very interesting and also not like very uh appropriate for for a gaming stream right but um you know i think i think if we if we recognize the work i'm gonna stop there <laughs> i i i uh i i haven't i haven't given enough thought as to uh for um for defense against narcissistic behavior. It's not something that settles with me, though. And it could just be a personality thing, too. It could be a lot of personality. I think I think there's deeper roots in that, but it, it could be partially personality-based because, um, in general, I don't really like hanging out with people who have a larger ego. And that's not uncommon, right? That's that's a pretty normal thing, I, I think. Whatever. I'm just going to stop talking about it. <laughs> it's not very interesting. Well, it is. It's interesting to me. But this sounds like one of those things that only I'm interested in, so... I'll keep my mouth shut. You know what is interesting? Here's something I'd like to talk about. Movie ratings. I know this is kind of out of the blue, but I was thinking of things that have, have compelled me and stuff I actually have done a lot of thinking about. Movie game, or movie... What was this thing? Movie ratings. Um, I'm gonna take another turn here. Pretty soon we should match up with our other wall. Because I did make it pretty far out. Uh, the other way too. Um, movie ratings exist, right? And it's important that they exist. I'm not disputing that. Obviously, you do, don't want a child walking into a theater to see a rated R movie. And of course, that also brings up the the, the debate of self self censorship versus um, governmental uh, censorship. Um, but what I will say is that if not even the parent can figure out if it's rated R movie. But then again, we do live in the, the age of the internet. So all this stuff can be disputed, and I can understand it being disputed. But let me just say, as of right now, I still think it's important that we have rating systems. Uh, I don't think... I think... 
the harm it causes, because I do think it causes harm also, I don't think warrants a, a overhaul. And I think this governmental censorship is something that still helps more than this helps. Although I understand the complaints with uh, governmental self... I, I understand the push for self-censorship as well. I think that is something everyone should practice anyway. Um, but I still think, like, in cases of, like, children, you can't expose their minds to stuff of rated R movies, so it makes absolute sense to have that kind of rating. And that uh, doesn't just go for rated R, that's obviously like, the extreme. It's, at least it's partially extreme. I'm thinking of, like, but also just, like, uh, you know, PG-13 for an impressionable child. Uh, he could pick up on some stuff that's not very healthy for his mental state at that age. Uh, so, obviously, this tree's got to go. And, obviously, um, I think in that case scenario, it's just helpful. It's helpful to have ratings, right? But there are some problems with it, and I would like to kind of talk about the problems. Uh, having categories of movies in general is a bit bit worrisome at times because what it does is it makes people want to see movies uh, based on that right and not necessarily based on uh, whether whether they think it's gonna be a good movie or not uh, so it ends up you know kind of raising funds for bad movies But I would say, at, at my age, I have never purposely seen another G movie, right? Um, and that's n and that's <laughs> that's kind of part of the problem, right? Does that make sense? Because there could be some really good G movies out there that I just preferably wouldn't want to see because I'm thinking it's tailored for a younger audience, and typically I don't like movies that's tailored towards a younger audience. When it could just be that the movie doesn't have any raunchy material whatsoever to the point where it just happened to be rated by G and they weren't aiming for all the jokes to be understood only by kids and simpler minds and whatnot uh, could be really good jokes or really really complex narratives and stuff like that that just happens to be rated G probably doesn't happen very often and the reason for that is because movies have to adapt to the mindset of people who are thinking I'm not going to see a rated G movie you see, I'm on a roll now. <laughs> now I started. Now I've got my marbles together. Uh, so people, because people are thinking like, I don't want to see rated G movie because it's probably going to have a, a, a kids material or whatever. That's the reason a lot of movies are sp trying specifically to be PG-13 or rated R, uh, so that people don't have that mindset when they come to see it because they're like, we have a really complicated, we have a really complex storyline here. We've got a really, uh, we've got a lot of good elements for this movie. And we just would be sad if people didn't see it just because it didn't have any raunchy material. So we're forced to put in raunchy material. Does that make sense? That's my question. You don't have to answer me now. Mainly because I don't think anyone's live right now. <laughs> I don't think anyone's watching live. Mainly talking to the VOD viewers now. I know there's at least uh, zero of you. So uh, that's the question. Or not the question. That's the problem, right? Is that it goes full circle. People don't want to see... A movie because it's rated G oftentimes so people don't want to make a movie that jokes will be lost on kids right a movie because like there's more than just um, raunchy material that goes into play for kids movies you also have to think about kids understanding uh, narratives and jokes and characters and whatnot did I leave my bed do you guys see a bed in here because I do not it's because I left it all the way over there and the Sun is going down let's take a quick uh, trip Arino over to that bed and then, oh wow, we actually did a decent amount of progress so far. Is the bed over here? Hello? Brown bed? I was over here, was I not? Where did I sleep? I came out here. I started talking about some bull crap or something like that. Maybe I didn't sleep. 
This might be a sleepless night, fellas. This is actually a really bad idea, because I, I, uh, I, need, I need some sleep. Right? There's no bed here. Not crazy. I don't think there's any bed in there. Let's find some sheep. Maybe we'll shear. Do I have shears on me? I do. I do have shears. The question is, do I have sheep on me? Because that would be more impressive. Where is this conversation gone? Um, rated R movies uh, are oftentimes rated R because they want to specifically hit a demographic who will only see rated R movies, right? And I, that's apparently some kind of experience. I've never actually gone to the theater and see, saw a rated R movie. I don't know why. I watch I watch rated R material, and I'm, I'm obviously old enough. Uh, I watch it on like Netflix and stuff like that. For some reason, going into a movie theater though and doing it, it feels like I'm not old enough to do this, right? <laughs> Even though I am, and I have been for over a year now, I've never felt the urge of like, I gotta go see a rated R movie like at at a theater, right? Uh, we also got Welcome to the Soda Popcast. You know what's funny? Gotta tab back in, excuse me. I'm talking to my friend. Sometimes, you know, you just try to talk to friends and people, and life gets in the way. Um, it's funny that you mentioned that, Spotters, because today is actually the day that I would be recording the Soda Popcast if it were not on hiatus. It is the last Friday of the month, and it, I started around 10 p.m., which is about when I usually start. Uh, this is my first free uh, Friday Friday at, of the month, last Friday of the month in a long time. Uh, but I think it's going to continue to be free, so Soda Popcast should return uh, next month, if all goes well. I just, by the time I found out I had this, this slot open, uh, it would have been too late to try to, you know, schedule other guests and whatnot. And, um, and not only that, but prep on what to talk about and stuff, which is something I typically do anyway. So, uh, it's, it's not today, but this probably will be next week. But anyway, uh, Spotters, since you're just joining, I have been talking about um, ratings of movies and how they affect people's perception of movies and how they affect the industry as a whole. Uh, and it's basically the gist of it, as, uh, of what I've said so far, is uh, people will go to movies and see specific movies because of the rating, and that's kind of a problem if you ask me. Uh, not an easy fixable problem, but it is a bit of a problem. You know me, I like to acknowledge knowledge problems existence even when there's nothing you could do about it. So it essentially sounds worthless. Anyway, uh, so people come in to see see a, if they see a G movie and a rated R movie, if they're an adult, they're likely going to see the rated R movie. If they're a kid, they have to see the G movie and that's understandable. But uh, I, I, I don't think many adults would go see the, the rated G movie. So people have to, the movie developers, even if they don't need, let's say, raunchy material in their film, they're going to add it if they want it to be seen by adults, right? And like, as an adult, or well, as a 19 year old, <laughs> and uh, after a lot of adults I know, um, I know a lot of them who just don't care at all if there is swearing or, or raunchy stuff and whatnot. Uh, they just care about it being a fun movie to watch. And that's how I feel too. What am I doing here? That's not a recipe. You lunatic. This is why this is a great invention. So, um, what was I saying? We got really good music going now and I forgot what I was saying. So it's, it's, it's tricky because now developers have to keep that in mind when they're making their movies. So if they want to have a really complex storyline, something that can only be understood by an adult, they are forced to add raunchy material, if that makes sense. They are, they're, or, or like if it's a really good comedy where the jokes won't be understood by children, not because of, uh, uh, you know, uh, older themes and whatnot, just because their brains aren't, aren't developed enough to understand that kind of humor, uh, then they're forced to add material to the movie to make it hit a different rating just so that it can be seen by the right demographic. And that's definitely a problem if you ask me. Oh, we're in the flower forest. Excellent. Excellent broke flower here. I'll tell you what, I still have a dandelion from uh, from the plains. I don't know how I got so many of these, but let's just plant them all there and make up for it. We'll turn this we'll turn this baby around, and we will we'll start building somewhere else. Didn't realize it's running directly into the forest. Uh, looks like let's do a quick flyabout. So I, I feel like in no situation, not no situation, but in very few situations, should movies be forced to add something regardless of whether or not they think it will make the movie better. That's kind of my idealist perception. Is I, I'd like 
I'd like movies to always have the opportunity to be better, and that everything that's added in the movie should be for the sake of making it better. Adding raunchy material, though, so it hits a certain demographic, isn't necessarily adding it for the sake of it being better. What am I doing? I'm doing the same problem. I think, like, and I'm not saying that that uh, adding adult themes and stuff like that is never for the sake of making the movie better. Absolutely not. Uh, there's plenty of circumstances where you need that stuff to make it better for the quality of the film. It's just weird to think about how many, how many decisions are made purely based off of the chances of someone seeing a movie because of its rating. Uh, and the same could be said for genres, but that's a whole other discussion and that's much more complex. Uh, so in, in, in context, some of the things you can think about is Marvel. Uh, Marvel makes a lot of movies, like one every month now. <laughs> I guess that's just the new norm. So the superhero movie thing is gonna blow over. It's just a matter of time. I'm, I'm confident in that, that people are actually going to get wildly sick of them. Many people are already, but I'm saying like, it's, Disney knows it's a fad that's gonna pass, and that's why they're trying to chug them all out now. I'm thinking maybe by, maybe by, uh, the 2020s, I think people are gonna be done with them. Uh, and then later they're gonna have some kind of revival or something like that. Maybe that's why they're bringing back Star Wars, so they don't have to worry about superhero movies for too long. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> um, Marvel, in Star Wars for that matter, uh, there's, there's always like, there's almost like an exact amount of swear words that's in every Marvel movie, which is interesting. Uh, and the same thing with like suggestive themes and stuff like that. It's always very consistent in Marvel movies because because um what was i saying because because they they want it to be seen by a particular audience and there's also a sense marvel's also a weird case because they have like so many preteens that watch and preteens have the feeling like oh if this there was a swear word in here that means this is edgy <laughs> and it's like that sounds like a joke but that's a legitimate thing with a lot of preteens you know younger people's minds act strangely <laughs> you know they they want to see stuff like that just so that they can feel more like an adult because the one thing you want to do when you're a preteen is become an adult and the one thing you want to do in the adult is oh gosh please let me be a kid again <laughs> so isn't that fun for for life i hope that the modern superhero movies are soon to die out uh by that do you mean like what do you mean by modern do you mean like uh so are you saying not like so if you if you go back to like one of the first superhero movies which is essentially spider-man by sony uh do you mean movies like that should stick around or like movies like the original iron man and stuff like that before it became a monopolized multi-universe i'm curious as to where where your line is drawn um, not, not that I'm judging, I'm, I'm just curious where, where your line is drawn, but, uh, yeah, it, it's just weird that, oh, this is great music right here. Ladies and gentlemen, the best part about ukulele, I can confidently say, is the music. Gameplay's alright, it's not too great, but it's alright, but the, the, the music, man. Um... <laughs> Yeah, like, people people want to see stuff that makes them edgy, and I felt a little bit of that, too, when I was younger. I was like, hey, you know, like, peep, like, I'm not going to be made fun of watching this show because it has these edgy themes, right? And that kind of sucks that that exists, but it's, it's understandable as to why it exists, and, hey, at the end of the day, people are going to try to make as much money as they can, right? There's nothing you could do about that. Uh, just the 12 movies a year, all the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I understand that. Um, I didn't know if there was like a particular uh, uh, movie or set of movies that you uh, particularly enjoyed from Marvel back in the day, so that's why I was asking. Because uh, I know I, for one, quite enjoy the original Iron Man. Definitely my favorite superhero movie out there. Uh, and preteen isn't even a biological stage movie <laughs> by marketers. <laughs> I know! And the preteens just eat it up. They're like, I'm not a teenager yet, but I'm. I, the other day, someone was 10. And they said they were preteen, and I was like, "That's not a thing, right?" Even when I was young, we we didn't do a ten, all right. It was it was eleven, it was eleven and then twelve. But that's push I, I, anyway. <laughs> that's not the discussion I meant to get into. But you know, you it's just it's just weird that uh, that movies are forced to put in certain stuff because they have to hit their demographic. Uh, and that's, you know, that's not just exclusive to movies. Pretty much every consumer product is like that. You have to hit certain demographics. And in that, in order to do that, you have to uh, sacrifice some things and do some things you may not want to do. And that's not, you know, a new thing. 
it's just sad because movie really is an art form and the best art is an art is art that's done with its full with 100% with its full full <laughs> with its fullest effort to make it the best it can be of the artist's eyes and i would love if that was the the mindset when working with movies and stuff like that because i just want there to i i want people to be able to make as good movies as they can and some people have you get movies like lord of the rings that's if there was a 10 out of a 10 movie i don't think there is i don't think there is such thing as a perfect movie but i would say lord of the rings got pretty dang close because it really did stick with what it wanted to do and it just ended up working out so well it, it just seemed like such a simpler time almost it seemed like they weren't too worried about demographics there was like no woman <laughs> at all in that film and i'm not saying that's that's a good thing i'm definitely not i'm not saying um <laughs> it sounded like i was saying it's a good thing i what i just meant to say was that it's it's an example of them not worrying about demographics nowadays you need women everywhere right and i'm not again not saying that's a bad thing i'm just saying to hit certain demographics you need fe more female leads you need um people acknowledging the man's world narrative and stuff like that and i'm not saying again not saying that's bad what i am saying though is that's added in a lot of times i'd argue not for the sake of making a better movie but for the sake of a appeasing public eye and stuff and i think that's a problem i don't i don't think you should even be thinking about the public eye when you're making a movie i think you should be thinking about your 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 product i think you should be thinking about the movie itself uh at no point in a completely ideal world right this is obviously so like dreamy and far-fetched uh but com in a completely ideal world you wouldn't have to think about the public at all when you're making your movie you're making art for yourself right that's the reason you make art and if other people can enjoy it too that's amazing uh if they can't though then then basically you just want your art to be appreciated by people who can appreciate it you don't want your art to be appreciated by people who can't appreciate art that's how i see it anyway and it would just be nice if if movies fall under that uh so then you have all these movies that are doing specific things to reach specific ratings or even specific genres but again that's a more complicated issue and not even a huge issue i'd, I'd say but it, uh, it's just weird when it comes to things like horror movies uh if you want to make a horror movie you have to go to a certain extent a lot of times because even though you just want to make you see it as an art project like i want to make a really good horror movie as an art project that's what i want to do uh and then and then you have to hit really intense you have to get really far on the spectrum to to because the people who watch that kind of movie want to be scared and uh not all horror movies are scary there's a lot of really good movies that might be considered horror movies or that might not even be considered as horror movies but are considered as horror movies that are really good and i see you have a message there. i'll read it in a second uh but but you have to go to these extremes just to make people of the horror genre watch it and that's kind of a problem with the horror, with the genres right now because um they might have this movie that's still too scary to be not a horror movie but they're left with marketing as a horror movie and if you're going to market it as a horror movie then only certain people are going to watch it right i for one don't watch horror movies so only a certain demographics going to watch it so you have to go to the farthest end of the spectrum so you can compete with all the other horror movies that are coming out and do the ultimate scaring in order to compete you have to do that you you got to make it a, an intense horror thriller and stuff like that uh there are some horror movies out there that aren't that scary but are in fact really good movies uh but and they're only labeled as horror movies because they couldn't be labeled as something else but a lot of people don't like them and they're not very popular because when you watch a horror movie you want to be scared so that's just the kind of a small problem with genres and that can be said with a lot of different genres horror was just a great example of course you can say so that with uh, both comedy and, and and romantic films and stuff like that so um yes yeah, so I'll, I'll check out your message as soon as i uh place down this bed and sleep away from mobs uh you sent two for my final project film class the teacher gave us advice to make the cast and i quote more diverse even if the acting is bad <laughs> something about it being shown at a festival and people are sensitive toward that for some reason yeah it's to me like the the thought about diversifying a movie and stuff like that when i'm watching it that's just too much meta thinking for me i don't like to think about the outside world when i watch a movie i like to think of a movie entirely within its own self entirely within the movie context 
Um, even when it comes to like sequels and stuff, I try to not even think about the originals as much unless it's necessary to understand the narrative. And a lot of movies are like that. Uh, and that's something with a, a lot of the Star Wars coming out. That's something I've been practicing a lot lately. It's like I, I got to try to not do as much meta thinking. Um, but then you get moments where they're purposely diversifying the cast. Uh, and again, not inherently a bad thing. But if everyone in st if there's not a single white millennial in Star Wars, right? When there used to be white millennial leads and whatnot. Again, I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I'm kind of walking on thin ice here. But you, it can't help but make you think meta. Think, oh, okay, so they, they have these characters because they, they want to hit those notes and that demographics and stuff like that. And then you think of that new Admiral in, in The Last Jedi and stuff. And that was obviously supposed to hit a lot of demographics and whatnot. Uh, but then you got me thinking outside. You got me thinking outside the movie. And that's, you know, movie, movies are an escape. At least that's what movies are to me. It's an art form and an escape. I'd say those are the two biggest things uh, movies are to me. So when I watch a movie, I want to think about the movie. I want the world, the movie to consume me for that period of time. Uh, so I can forget about all the other crappy stuff going on in the world, right? And I, I'm not like, uh, I'm not like a downer, you know, saying like oh, everything in the world is crappy. Obviously it's not. But uh, when you go to a movie theater, you want to not think about that stuff. But when you see them purposely trying to hit certain notes because of that stuff then you end up thinking about that stuff anyway so it gets on my nerves a little bit uh and it takes me out of the movie and i just don't want to be taken out of the movie i want to be within the movie because that's why i'm watching the movie um okay i think it says something about someone when they make themselves out of the viewing experience and then well, oh when they take themselves out of the viewing experience in the movie and they're watching they think hey there are too many white people here <laughs> Not to, uh, not afraid to talk about the subject, uh, because thinking about other people's responses make me think about it, even when I try not to do that. Oh, what? But I'm, I can't even follow the message. Not afraid to talk about the subject. Period. Because thinking about other people's responses make me think about it, even when I try not to do that. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. So it's just more distracting for like the movie and stuff. I see. You were talking about in the context of the movie. I, I, I had some trouble finding that for a second. Um, what did I just do? Why did I come back here? I slept, right? Is that right? I don't know what I was doing. I've kind of been on autopilot, but um, yeah, it's just like movies should be made with the purpose of having a good movie. That's just how I see it. I think, I think then we'd be getting a lot of better movies around if you ask me. And some of the, and all the best movies, really, almost all of them, are, th yeah, bad grammar, 3 a.m. <laughs> okay, but, uh, I, all the best movies, are from people trying to make a good movie. But I, I think modern demographics have shown you don't really have to try to make a good movie. You have to try to hit a standard. It's all about standards. It's not about what you think is a good movie. At least I refuse to believe every Marvel movie comes out is because the artist behind it thinks that okay so this is what i want to I break this that because the artist thinks that it's a good movie i refuse to believe that i believe they they think i'm gonna make so much money on this uh we hit all these good, i just placed all this grass and i'm removing it i hit i hit a bunch of good notes that's gonna work with pr uh the the council <laughs> the council of marvel is gonna love it uh it really sucks that i can't make a movie that i think is good though I genuinely think that's a lot of the thoughts going through their head. Maybe more money, maybe more it sucks I can't do this, but that I think that about sums up the thoughts of going through their head. And I just I think people should make movies to be good. That's why movies should exist. Well, they they should exist to distract and to be good. That's that's but that kind of covers what I said of what I think of movies. It's an art form uh, that is a great distraction. That's what entertainment's for. That goes beyond movies. It's, it's what entertainment is. However, I know I've been talking a lot of bad stuff about modern movies. I'm not a fan of the state of movies right now. And I think a big part of that is because Disney is behind 90% of them. Like 90% of the Marvel movies. Let's uh, arc this up a bit and we'll take an early turn. Uh, because, but on one hand, or on, on another field though, another place that's really shining right now, in my own personal opinion, is the one and only TV industry. I think, honestly, we're at a peak when it comes to TV shows. Not every TV show is great, obviously. 
Uh, in fact, I know quite a few TV shows that are bad, but I could probably count a lot more good TV shows that came out in the last five years than good movies. Um, and I think the biggest reason for that, and it's no surprise, is the one, the only, the Titan, Netflix, and other streaming services, but obviously Netflix is the most prominent one, and the only one with good shows. No, I'm just kidding. I actually have all three, <laughs> which I know sounds obsessive, but, you know, Prime Video, you get it with Prime anyway, and it's, and, and, uh, Hulu, you can get that with Spotify, like, as a, as a deal, so it's like, I don't know. I have all three. I'm a movie nut, all right? I'm, I'm not, I don't feel too bad about it, but, uh, what was I even talking about? Yeah, that has opened up a whole new realm of good TV shows. The formula has completely changed. We now have a thing called binging. Ooh, have you heard that before? Yes, binging. I do mean that word that people use to describe someone watching TV shows way more than they should in the too short of times period, right? That's me. <laughs> I binge. Uh, TV shows are in a great place right now because of binging. In the past, you would have one episode a week of random stuff. And because of the one episode a week, by the time you watch a new episode, a lot of people have already forgotten what's happened in the previous episode. So you have to spend some time recapping, first of all. And they they would just generally frown on overarching storylines a lot more. Uh, there's obviously been a dramatic change in overarching storylines now and 10 years ago. Um, and I see that you sent a message, so I should check that out. That's what I do to Minecraft QHCs. Uh, but they're, you're saying old ones because the new ones are released every... Uh, like every every two days but then again there's no such thing as new minecraft uhc's so i guess you are talking about the old ones but yeah uh, uh binging really does change the entire formula because now you can do overarching storylines you can get somewhere and people are going to remember exactly where they were because they just watched it five seconds ago and now netflix is doing this thing where they add seasons at a time am i running out of room for grass oh no no, no. I'm, I'm great with grass let's put some there well i might take that back out anyway but that stone I'm having trouble with. And it's lag I'm having trouble with. Good lord. This this um this world is way laggy, my dude. It's way laggy. Um But yeah, yeah, just just not having to take the time to recap, not having uh not being afraid, not having to hit a certain time mark, right? Like every episode before I should take some iron. I have some iron over by the AFK Golem Farm. But I should grab a little bit more. Hmm. Oh, I'm out of iron. That's right. <laughs> I was like, this is the end of the SP. I should just spend it all. Okay. Uh, whew, this lag. Okay, I gotta get out of here. Much better by the, the place. I don't know why, man. But my house did not like the 1.13 update. Um. Yeah, so like every episode had to be like 22 minutes long because they had to fit in ad time. And that's a game changer, too. Netflix doesn't have ads. What is this? You don't have to pay money. You don't have to pay like hundreds of dollars a month for for television, and you don't get ads. Because it's, it's, you pay like what ten bucks a month and you watch all these shows without ads. It almost feels like television really didn't need to be that expensive. Oh wait a second, it absolutely did not need to be that expensive. No wonder Netflix won the war, or will win the war, I should say. Television's still holding out for now, but. Uh, you know, you don't have these ads, so you don't have to have these ad breaks, and by, you know, by the time ad breaks roll around, people have already forgotten stuff, right? As soon as you watch an ad, you, you're kind of forgetting what the last couple moments are, so you have to do another recap, and it ultimately takes a lot of time, and for TV shows, time is quality, and money. Time is quality and money, right? The more time you have in a comedy TV show, the more jokes you can fit in. If you got rid of five minutes in a comedy TV show, you're throwing away a lot of amazing material, right? So, but now, episodes don't even have to be 22 minutes long, they don't have to have specific ad breaks, they don't have to have these beats, they don't have to have the climax, right? At the end of a, at the end of a, right before an ad break, just to make, this is the wrong portal. What in the world is that? Are there new paintings for the default update? Spotters! What did you do? <laughs> Am I using a recent, I'm just using the, no, wait a second, no, wait, wait, wait a second. I know what this is. <laughs> I haven't read your message. All I see is Kardashian, so it's gonna be a funny one to read. Um, I, I okay. So 
It might be Tango Tech's base. Here's the deal. Hermitcraft Season 6 came out. Look at that. It's even got like the, this dark... What is this? I'm not going to go down there. Don't worry. Your secret's safe with me. Um, I, I'm using the Hermitcraft resource pack because the other one didn't work in 1.13, so they converted it to work with 1.13. Um, I, but they also, there's other small changes. I assumed that was maybe like turning turtles into Suzuma, uh, Suzuma skins or something like that. But turn, maybe they changed paintings also, because that looked like Tango Tech's painting. Anyway, I'll check out your message. As long as legendary conditions are on TV, it will never die. Yeah, that's not probably the best example of good TV shows right now that I was talking about. You can go down there. Oh man, I'm scary. I'm not going into the creepy man's basement. That's like rule number one. They're like, when 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 I was talking to people saying we gotta get spotters on here, they're like, okay, you can have spotters on, but there's a couple rules, right? Uh, number one, um, don't take his sarcasm seriously. Number two, uh, he's gonna do some really complex narrative about a pig. Don't get in his way. Number three, uh, he's gonna have a scary basement and don't go inside it, right? It's pretty simple. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Uh, TV shows. No, we need to go over to the iron farm. Right. TV shows are fun, <laughs> basically, right now. It's in a great place. It's really at its peak. Uh, and if you, if anyone ever needs uh, good TV re show recommendations, because I know there's also bad ones out there, believe me. I see them on Netflix all the time, on suggestions and stuff. I know where the good ones are, right? Uh, probably some of the best, if you look for comedies. Curb Your Enthusiasm, man. Insanely good show. Of course, that was a uh, pre pre Netflix time. It's just one of those ones that happened to be really good. But a lot of the Netflix originals are also really good. But anyway, I'm just kind of rambling now. It's just we 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 live in a we live in a society full of good stuff. Oh, wait, no, no. Let's craft this first. We have a crafting table right here. No, no, let's leave it here. We're, we're gonna do this, all right? We'll put these back. Grab this iron. Let's, um, there are people in the world. Yes, I agree. Let's make some iron bars. Anyway, I think that pretty much wraps up my conversation about TV shows. Basically, TV shows are in a good place. I don't think movies are, though, unfortunately. I think that, I think, it's kind of sad to say, I feel like right now, cinema's kind of dead. Even like movies on Netflix, you're oftentimes just feeling like, I think this would have been a better TV show. You just have a lot more time to work with. The one hour, to, or the two hour time frame that you have to deal with, it's very difficult. And I think because people have had more time with, with TV shows, they've been able to produce better stuff, ultimately. Uh, so unfortunately, I, I, I do think the cinema is uh is kind of out the window and disney's <laughs> disney's is trying to milk it while it can because right now those movie those uh marvel movies making bank same thing with star wars how crazy is it that disney owns star wars like that's still just a crazy thing disney just owns freaking everything guilty pleasure show of mine is big brother oh i think you've mentioned that before <laughs> once or twice uh oh 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 Oh, uh, I think you mentioned that once or twice. Uh, when I mentioned the show, I either get that show is still on. Do you mean Survivor? And what? <laughs> I'm pretty sure mine was one of those three. We should watch a season on Watch Together or something. There are plenty of good ones in all the old seasons on the YouTube. Wait, what? Is oh a season of of Good Brothers? So there are plenty of good ones. Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. Well, well, maybe, just maybe, my dude. Of course. I, I seem to have a history of taking forever to schedule anything that's collaborative. So who knows? <laughs> it's hard to schedule something like that when you could be scheduling like UHCs or whatnot. Rumor has it that the last group videos of the server are going to happen like a month after the server's already closed. So uh, I guess that gives you a bit of an idea. Do I have a bed? Did I leave my... I, I'm the king at leaving my bed places. Excuse me, I'm talking to my friend. Watch together would be a cool thing for um, 
Well, I guess you couldn't really do that for a stream. Probably, probably some rules against that. <laughs> I don't think I've ever actually used Watch together. I've been in like several Discord ch uh, chats where, look at that, we got it, we got a um, a bed from um, whatever the heck this game was called, whatever the heck this miserable game was. This was um, Hot Lava. That's what it was, made by Seth Blink. Well, sort of. I mean, <laughs> uh, I played it with, with Bombastic and Owlton. And I left all the stuff here because I thought it was cool. as a cool memento. To be completely honest with you, though, I think all three of us were a little less than happy when we were playing that game. We were all a little tired, and, uh, like, we wanted to record it, but, like, we really didn't want each other to win or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, Ableton and Bombesk have a very particular interest. Uh, and that could be why I don't collaborate with them extremely often in video on the SMP. I collaborate them on specific other things. But on the SMP, it's hard to find activities that all three of us enjoy. Of course, it's hard to find <laughs> activities that Bombastic joins on the SMP in general, so. Oh, look at that. So, it goes out that way quite a bit, even though it's pretty narrow. I thought I would have reached up with the other end of the wall by now, but I guess not. I'm, I'm, let me take a quick flight and see where it is. Is this even the flower forest right here? There's an extreme hills here. Okay, it's not this far. I'm pretty sure I had to cut through a forest at some point. Maybe that's this forest. Because this isn't a flower forest. Huh. There is also a slight possibility. Okay, wait. Flower forest is right here, so... Like, right over here? There's also a possibility that, like, the latest work on the wall that was done over here, that was done before we transferred servers, and when we transferred servers. Oh, yeah, this song. Oh, yeah, the, the Mario 64 ending. Quite a nostalgic song. Yeah, Pat's got some tunes. Gotcha. Oh, check out this tune. From a phenomenon of a game. Here it is. Here's the other wall. I think part of the progress might have been cut off in the server transfer. Um, maybe not. It's just a really freaking big flower forest. It's insanely big. Anyway, go back to the other spot. I like working on that way. I don't want to clear out the forest yet. Work, building a wall through a forest is really annoying. But this is cool scenery right here. I feel like I might have built something over here at some point. I was like, I'm going to build a secret build and no one ever is going to find it. Because it's way the heck over here. And then someone does and be like, what the heck is this? I think I might have started it and never finished it. It was like at a time where I was like essentially wanting to build stuff just for the sake of building something on the SP. Which never works out, by the way. Never build just for the sake of building. Uh it's, it's like 90% 90, 90 of the time that's not gonna work out for you, I think. At least in my humble experience. But uh you know, you come up with ideas as you go on though, and then that helps too. You know what's awesome is this to-do list. I feel like this is like my favorite thing I've done uh, on the S&P in a while because it's it helps it really it just helps me let's do okay let's do the stone bricks first and we'll do the iron bars touch up later Skyrim now out on microwaves worldwide yeah the king of the king of reboots although to be fair you know at the end of the day more systems is more systems more ports is more ports and it's not ex exactly like, it's, it's relatively easy, easy enough to do to port, I'd imagine. Obviously, I'm not a game developer, so I... But, like, it can't, it can't be as difficult as creating a new game and stuff. And I've heard the argument that people get annoyed with ports because they distract... For, they take time away from actual games. When I don't think that's the case at all. Because they have different teams that work on the porting, and they'll have a different team that works on uh, just working on new games and stuff like that. So I think that's kind of a misconception, but uh, I think at the end of the day, you know, ports are good because you get into more systems. Although I cannot wait until the microwave edition of Skyrim because that means I can finally cook my hot pocket while playing Skyrim. Guys, this stream is sponsored by our friends over at 
Hot Microwave Pocket Skyrim. Roll off the tongue as nicely as I hoped, but I didn't want to actually say Hot Pockets because it's not. And even joking about that, it's not okay. You joke about it, not okay. Not okay. Okay, let's grab this uh, grass and finish this terraform in here because that is ugly. But uh, I was talking about something on the SMP at some point, right? Right? Was I talking about the server of which I live? I feel like I was. I just can't remember why. These flowers aren't part of the forest, right? No, then I don't care about you. You see, we, we try to keep the landscape um, clean on that side. On that side of the wall, way over there in the flower forest. These guys are losers. They're just getting in the way. They knew they knew there was going to be a, a wall here. And they decided to live anyway. It's very unfortunate for the wall builder. He has to deal with all this crap. What was I talking about? I was talking about something on the SP. Talking about something? Oh, yeah, the to do list. That's what I was saying. To do list is really fun. It's a really cool idea. This mountain is going to go. Ooh, so is my shovel by the looks of it. Oh, that's okay. I'm almost out of bricks. And then it's just going to be iron placing. Ooh, classic Terraria music right here. One of my favorite things about Terraria. I would, I can talk on and on for hours about Terraria's uh, game mechanics. Not, not exactly all positive things. But I could talk about the positive things and the not so positive things. Because uh, it's a very intriguing game to me. How they balanced it and whatnot. I am also just very interested in game design in general. We haven't dealt with a, uh, a river wall in a while. I don't remember what I did. I think I just like this. <laughs> I might have placed them down below, but I don't have that many stone bricks now, so I feel I should just keep going. Did I pick up this? I did. Loki kind of forgot I was streaming for a second. He's getting this groove with this Terraria music. This Terraria music, man. Talking about um, being within the world you're supposed to be captivated in within entertaining media such as movies or video games in this case scenario. Terraria does a great job at that. Sorry. Wrong flower. But I have two of them. So if I break one, I replant two. Look at that. I'll get out of your way. No problemo. Although, is that technically in the flower biome? Hmm, this is technically planes. Hmm. Hmm. We got imposters! Eradicate the illegal immigrants. There we go. I'm talking about flowers. I'm talking about flowers. I'm talking about those. Okay. They are, they're all gone. They're goners. And we have 14 now, so we can replace flowers all day long. Let's keep moving this way until we reach the mountain. Excuse me, horsey. Diddy Kong Racing Mario Kart 64. This stuff is important. It is really, really important. Um, I've never played Diddy Kong Racing, but I will say Diddy Kong <laughs> Racing. Gosh, is Mario Kart 64 broken? I'm sorry. I know people love that game, but man, it's one broken game. It's insanely broken. It's got some cool stuff, don't get me wrong, but after playing some more modern Mario Karts, boy, is it broken. Honestly, the Super Nintendo version is better, too. Which, I... It's, I know I'm not allowed to, uh... I'm, I'll be crucified if I if I criticize this game too much, but... It's, uh... It's one of those things, to quote James Douglas. It's... It's broken. It's just broken. I, I can't slice it any other way. It's a broken game. Any game where you toss a red shell, it comes back and hits you to hit someone else. That's what I call uh, a little bit of an aged game, I must say. Here's here's my, now, my full thoughts on it. The AI rubber bands, am I right? Star second place, am I right? Yeah, okay, so here, here are my thoughts on it. Here, here's my expression. I told this to Owlton also, because, um, well, Owlton, Bombastic, and Dancer, they wanted to play the game. And like, Pat, you, you want to play Mario 64? I was like, here's what I think of Mario 64. I think it is a game 
that was legendary, but it's still good. Only one one of the only ones where you feel like you're going fast. Boy, they came out with 200cc in Mario Kart 8, so I I don't know, I'm not sure about that, man. It's hard to even feel fast when your frame rates is like five per second. But, but they, so they asked me like, you want to you want to play Mario Kart 8? I was like, or Mario Kart 64. I was like, no, look, listen. Mario Kart 64 is a groundbreaking game. It's it's awesome how popular it got. It's awesome how many fun memories people have had with it. It's really cool that people have very warm nostalgic for it. Uh, but it's one of those games that belongs in a museum to be looked at and remembered and appreciated, but not to be played, not to be handled, not to be touched. You don't touch things in a museum. You you don't you don't want to you don't want to <laughs> discherish it. Uh, right? You don't want to, um... You don't... You, you can discharge. I don't know what that word is. You don't want to, uh, de-justify it by playing it. And Lord knows that happens when you play <laughs> Mario Kart 64. Because it's not exactly as fun as you remember. So, uh, that's my analogy. It, it belongs in a museum to be appreciated for what it was within the context of the time at which it came out. But... It should, it's not meant to be still played. It's meant to be looked at. Look with your eyes, but not with your hands kind of deal, I'd say. And that's my full analogy for uh, Mario Kart 64. Uh, 150 isn't fast anymore, huh? 150 is fast. 150 is fast, but 200, man? This stuff's insane. This stuff is insane. But how many Mario Karts have you played? Because... I, I don't mean that in a snobby way. I mean... But you said it doesn't feel like you go fast anymore. Because uh, to my understanding, you haven't played Mario Kart 8... And I'm curious if there's another Mario Kart game that specifically makes you feel like you're going slow. Like, is there another one you're referring to? Where you do feel slow, not... Just because, like, I, uh... Just curious, you know. Never have a bet on me. Siski Ford did it right in that department. Didn't it? Didn't it, though? Did they, did, could you go fast? I don't know. I don't know. I seem to remember pretty, going pretty, pretty slow. All of them. You've played all of them? I, for some reason, I had in my mind that you didn't... Maybe I was thinking of James. But for some reason, I thought you hadn't played Mario Kart 8. Uh, interesting. Okay. I mean, I haven't really been, been paying attention to how fast other Mario Karts have gone. So, you know, you, you might be onto something there. I'd have to replay some of them. I, and also, okay, what should be noted, I'm not a- DS was a blast. Oh, well, you sent a lot of messages. 64 did it right in that department, all of them. 7, I felt like had- had weights on. 7, what was Mario Kart 7? Mario Kart 7 was the 3DS one. Okay. DS was a blast. DS was a blast. Uh, it's hard to go wrong with download play. 8 player download play? Uh, sign me up? That's great. And as I was saying earlier in the stream, I don't know if you were there or not, but I was talking about Nintendo's handhelds and how they're competing with themselves if they keep going with the handheld department. But DS's used to be everywhere back in the day. It was like 50% chance if I ran into a kid, hold the phone, if I ran into a kid, if I ran into a kid on a bike, you know, just ran him over, uh, I would likely loot a DS from his pocket. It was like 50% chance uh, that, that a kid would have a DS. And I ended up playing download play quite often at social gatherings and stuff. And it was amazing playing Mario Kart DS on it. Uh, the battle mode was outstanding. Um, I know I know it's very difficult to believe in a battle mode better than Mario Kart 64's. Uh, I will say that I think the DS one was 100 times better than the one in Mario 64. And what, again, those say hey, good memories, right? I have good memories of that game. Everyone has good memories of that game. But memories, you know, they can't really carry on to modern standards, right? Memories are memories for a reason. And that just goes back to my to my, uh, my analogy. Uh, what was I talking about? This is a darn good song. Boy, Zelda, man. You knock it out of the park every time. 
But here's the deal. What, what else is, like, I was never the biggest Mario Kart fan until Mario Kart 8. Um, and there's not, I don't have a biggest pinpointer for that. I, 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 I mean, I played the games. I played them. It's just like, yeah, it's fun, but I, there's usually other games I'd rather be playing. Want to hear an unpopular opinion that will lose all your viewers? <laughs> so, you mean you? I thought I just did that. I thought I just said Mario Kart 64 is crap, and then he left. It's not crap. I, I wouldn't say it's crap. I'd just say it's broken. That's the best way to put it. Uh, but yeah, Mario Kart 8, for some reason, after I played that, I was like, this is amazing. I loved Mario Kart 8 to death. It seemed like everything that Mario Kart should be to me. Uh, the stages were all plenty plenty fun to ride and beautiful and the music was orchestrated and outstanding and the uh there was online and wasn't like as crappy as the Reeves one but still still nintendo and i was just like you know what Th i don't think i need any more from mario kart the only problem was the battle mode i'd say double dash is overrated um that is a pretty highly liked one i've never played double dash admittedly so i i can't uh I can't comment on that, but I do know it is pretty popular, so that might, yeah, I might give it some reviews. Hey, I'm open-minded for it not being great, though. I mean, I'm willing to accept that. If I'm willing to accept Mario Kart 64 isn't a, uh, isn't the pinnacle of gaming, then I'm definitely willing to, to admit that Double Dash isn't great, mainly because I don't have nostalgia for it anyway, so it doesn't matter, and it doesn't, you know, whatever. <laughs> um... It seems like what's interesting about Double Dash is whenever people talk about how much they like it, uh, they never seem to say anything that makes me think like, "Oh, this game must be better than all the rest," as they propose it to be. Right? They say like the whole double person in a cart thing, which sounds cool to me, but not to the point where I would say it's better than other Mario Kart games. Like that just sounds like a fun little gimmick. But I've never played it, so you know. It's just interesting trying to hear people describe it. It's like that show Stranger Things. Everyone loves that show Stranger Things. Hey, look at me. Give me five seconds. I'm already back on the TV shows. But people people always explain or say that that's like a really good show and stuff. And I believe them. It's just whenever they try to describe it to me, they like don't say anything that sounds remarkably interesting. If that makes sense. Speaking of, this song, every Mario 64 song that comes on spotters. It's just like, this is my song. <laughs> like, you, the, the playlist, the universe played this song for me at this moment. And this, this happens like every time. <laughs> and meanwhile, like, tons of other amazing songs are being played, but it's by games you haven't tried. And then, but then as soon as Mario 64 comes on, you're like, this is the best playlist ever. <laughs> yeah, this is a legit song, though. I mean, there's a reason I put it on. I, uh, there's this guy called the 8 bit drummer who will, um, play songs drum songs on streams by the way freaking drums the most underrated instrument ever it's probably not but it's still a really cool instrument and there's this one streamer who does drums and he will do video game songs and stuff and i suggested this song to him of course i i subscribed to do it with twitch prime i don't I, I i don't think i've actually paid any money towards content creators directly unfortunately i'd like to i don't have money for that though just use the prime sub and i gave him this song and his backlog was so big I didn't see it. <laughs> but I was like, this is gonna be a fun one to see live. Cause it's got a really cool drum beat. Oh, speaking of good music. I can't say drum beat cause it's another drum beat. It might, oh, I still have more. Okay, I was gonna say that ran out really quickly. Still more aim bars. This is an outstanding song. This is Gerudo Valley. Uh, home, first home, first appearance was in, um, uh, Ocarina of Time, and I kept getting renditions after that. This is the Smash Brothers version, and it's outstanding with that Spanish guitar. I may say so myself. Uh, Ape bit drummer, I'm sure is is God reincarnated. Oh, so you've seen him? Yeah, he's uh he's very entertaining. A lot of respect for that guy. It's just there's something about drummers, right? You don't see this in every musician, but something about drummers who are just so into what they do. It just seems like every second of them doing that, they love it. And it's it just makes you happy watching, right? Yeah, I I like him a lot. It's also cool that he's gotten as popular as he has. 
don't know how I'm gonna fix this situation, but I'm sure I'll find a way eventually. Did, did you ever, out of curiosity, did you ever watch Smooth and the Groove a lot? I might have already asked you this, but uh, I'm just disappointed because um, back in 2013 and 14, pretty much anyone in the video game music scene knew who Smooth and the Groove was, and that's not so much the case anymore. Unfortunately, um, a lot of it's kind of before a lot of people's time because he doesn't really upload anymore. Uh, I think I think he got hit with like the uh, the YouTuber depression or whatever that a lot of people hit. I don't mean to say whatever to de you know devalue it, but um, I just don't know what to call it. That's all. Uh, and he, he didn't upload much, but man, was he just he was the staple of video game music. He was the largest video game acapella channel out there. I know acapella has an interesting reputation at certain points, but, uh, and it's not something I'd listen to, you know, a bunch in a row. I feel like with any acapella song, I, I can only listen to a couple in a row, then I need some real instruments. But, uh, not to say that the vocals isn't a real instrument. And see, you can see, Pat, uh, the Nat is very great at stepping on landmines, <laughs> uh, and then trying to back off them after it's already too late. <laughs> but, um... So the Groove was basically a classic, and uh, I've got a lot of respect for that dude, too. I always thought it'd be cool to see a a uh, collaboration between Smooth the Groove and some other people like 8-Bit Drummer or Bulby. Bulby was always a cool dude. He, uh, he still uploads. He does 8-Bit remixes of modern songs, which is pretty cool. Again, not something I'd listen to over and over again. 8-Bit in general, I think it's it's fun. It's fun. That it's cool that it exists. And it's fun to listen to it once in a while, but it's not like playlist worthy. A lot of times, I'd say, only a couple I put on a playlist. A couple Pokemon tracks and stuff are actually on this playlist that are in 8-bit. But it's just cool that he does that. He 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 has these programs and stuff, and he's able to make modern songs into 8-bit and 16-bit and all the specific stuff like that, which is uh, pretty awesome. If I may say so myself. Sorry, I was interrupted. Um, said something about microphone. Everyone can sing until they hold the microphone, that is. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm trying I'm trying to very carefully decipher what you just said. So are are you saying that people sound better to themselves until they actually start recording themselves or in, in front of a live audience and stuff like that? Or are you saying it's specifically the idea of actually trying to sing is 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 what makes singing bad is what makes bad singing bad i should say i don't know maybe, maybe i'm not making any sense i just i i i i don't like misunderstanding people i try to try to understand them completely uh but i i'm clearly failing on that regard yeah this is a good song too mario party mario if you're talking about game design Mario Party is a very, very interesting topic to talk about, at least for me, because it's a game that a lot of people love, right, and a lot of people have fun with, yet it has all these elements to be a bad game, yet to this day, I still don't call it a bad game, I don't see it as a bad game, it has all these, all this wait time, all this chance, all, all, all this stuff that's just downright unfair to the player, and it's far this thing from balanced. Yet somehow, it's a functional, it's a functional game. It's not functional. It's a dysfunctional game that I find myself wanting to play all the time. Isn't that a bizarre one? I like playing Mario Party with with friends. You know, I don't like playing it as a hardcore experience. But I think what it is, I think the science behind that is just that. People, people want to be social, right? It's in our nature. Uh, obviously, there's exceptions to work, but uh, we're, we're humans are social butterflies. The only, the only difference is some people are less so than others. I am much less so than other people. But I think the science behind why Mario Party is a lot of fun is because you're hanging out with your friends. I think that specifically is it. And the, what's on the screen is something to laugh at. 
So it's this entertainment that just feeds into overall your friendship, but really it's your friendship that's doing the heavy work. It's your friendship that's holding the game up. It's having fun with other people. It's, it's being around other people that's actually making the game fun. That's what I think the science is behind it. In which case, if Mario Party can do that, hey, kind of hard to call it a bad game at the end of the day. So it's just an interesting thing to talk about. Controlled randomness that doesn't take itself seriously. Yeah, and I guess taking itself seriously is a key word in there. If, if you were to take Mario, Car Mario Party seriously like you take other games seriously, obviously, you run into some problems. But I, I really think it's it's the friendship, it's the time you spend with other people that's great. But then you have to start asking, like, would I have more fun spending time with these people doing something else? And a lot of times I'd say no. <laughs> if I'm playing Mario Party, I'd be like, no, this is great. Like, what else would I be doing right now with all these friends? Sometimes you want to focus on the conversation and stuff. But if you're focusing on the conversation, what if you're doing something else while focusing on the conversation? And there's a lot of games I ask that question for. A lot of board games, a lot of crappy board games, right? Like Apples Apples. I freaking hate that game. That's one of the games I vowed to never play again because I hate it so much. Every time friends ask me, everyone else in the room can be playing that game. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'll just sit here and watch. I don't, I don't want to contribute to that bad game design. But, but, uh, Apples Apples does give that sense of you're able to talk with people and have something to laugh at and stuff. I just think Apples Apples does it a whole lot worse than Mario Party does. Uh, and Mario Party is one of the few games that can do that for me. A lot of times, I take the game's integrity more seriously than, than, than just having an opportunity to talk with your friends, because you can, you can have that opportunity to talk with your friends, regardless of the game is there or not. So when I'm, when I'm critically thinking about games, I like to not put that into factor uh, of it's being fun because friends are there. Almost any game can be fun because friends are there. But why, why Mario Party? Why is this one different? Why, why do I struggle to find a problem with all the crap that goes on with Mario Party? Like, everything that's, that would be bad in other games is fun in Mario Party. Doesn't make sense to me. I guess there is the mini games. That's a lot of fun, right? Just doing small little games. Really, that's why you're playing, is for the mini games. All the board game stuff is, is just what ties it together so that you can play it for a longer period of time. Great marketing, I must say. It's just interesting. That's, that's all you can really say is that it's interesting. It's fascinating, I'd say. Anyway, I'm going to go over to the um, the end, the end, uh, the ender ender, as some people call it, uh, because I want to restock my uh, pickaxe and shovel because Alton has my other picks right pick right now. Um, oh, hey, spotters. What is this? What is this? This is what you call a floating sign. I need a sword. And I should take my armor off. I feel like this update increased enemy spawn rates because this feels like better than usual. Could be wrong. But I know Bombastic and Alton were saying that they made this before and it used to be better and that the one in the SP wasn't as good. So maybe 1.13 re-added better spawns or something like that? But I don't know. I don't know. I'm not I'm not into that. I don't I don't know much about that Mamba Jobo. It could be. You know what it really could be? I think this is the most likely option. Uh, on 1.12 you're running on Spigot, and so there's a lot of customary things on Spigot that makes the server run better, which is good, but it sacrifices some, maybe some things like this, I don't know. One of the things it sacrificed was like XP orbs, uh, they would like clump together and stuff like that. Oh, I'm just getting XP right now. Whoopsies. Whoopsies. Yeah, so I, I had to, uh, put that in the right hand. I saw that episode. Oh, okay. Well, fine. Then don't look at it, okay? Jeez, I'm sorry I wasted five seconds of your life. Uh, but yeah, so it could be that Spigot did something like that by default, which is something that can be changed because it's very customizable. Uh, but as soon as Spigot's available in 1.13 and we get back on there, uh, then I'll have to look into that to see if there's something stopping the end of this one. It's so sorry about the very loud sounds. Let's do that. I'll just turn it off for now. Once this is healed, then you also need to do my uh, shovel. This is good music too here. Undertale. When you're talking about game design, Undertale is another fascinating one to talk about because it's very narrative driven, and that's that's understandable from the start. You know, a lot of games are like that. There's a lot of games out there that are just narrative driven. Typically, I don't enjoy those kind of games, but Undertale I did 
because Undertale also has these RPG elements, but it's not great RPG elements. It's not super comp complex, and usually in RPGs you want complexity. Uh, instead, it's very basic. Uh, you find this item, it does three attack, um, or you find this item that does three defense and stuff. You can only carry, you can only wear two items at a time. You can only carry maybe twelve items at a time and stuff like that. There's hardly any special powers and, and whatnot, but there is some. Uh, where the real gameplay stands is when you're uh, uh, attacking enemies. Then it becomes a bullet hell game, and that kind of genre is where you're just this little dot avoiding all these like crazy stuff on screen and stuff like that, uh, and and try not to get damaged. And that's very intriguing gameplay. But the amount of time you spend doing that compared to just reading the narrative is crazy. You you spend a lot more time just walking around and doing the storyline than you do actually pl playing a game. And typically that's something I'd frown upon. I, just because I kind of like to have my movies and games. <laughs> oh gosh. I, sometimes, sometimes I just listen to what I'm saying. I'm thinking, I probably sound like the most snobby, pretentious guy out there. But usually I like to have my my movies and games separate. <laughs> Gosh, what is wrong with me? And, um, I, cause I think like with really good storylines, a lot of times I'd rather just watch it as a movie. And if they can make really good gameplay that fits it, then great. Absolutely. I'm not saying you shouldn't have good storyline games. It's not what I'm saying at all, but I'm saying if your focus is storyline and the gameplay is hurting because of it, that's usually a bad thing in my opinion. Cause that's, that's when you kind of get into movie territory. That's where the movie movies are supposed to exist. When you have games like heavy rain and Detroit, I have a hard time understanding because it's like, okay, you, you, the gameplay is very poor here. Why did this have to be a game? Is is choosing dialogue what to say? Like, is that is that actually gameplay? Just choosing which lines to say when most lines lead to the same thing anyway. It's weird. Um, thoughts on Detroit? Be hey, yeah, I'm sure you sent that a little bit ago because I just now said it. Yeah, that's um, it's just it's too just it's. Oh, also the strip block gear. It's it's so. Is there anything else I need to repair while I'm here? Things are good. Begin those phantom membranes too, which help it. It's so Detroit in another game similar to it was like Heavy Rain and um, there's a couple of them out there. Uh, I just feel like I don't know. It there, there's some merit to it because you you get this feeling that you're controlling the storyline, which is the best part about storylines in video games in general because you're choosing the different dialogues and it makes you feel like you're you're. You're the captain of the ship, right? You're directing the ship to where it goes in the storyline. The thing is, is, just most of the time, half the stuff you click is just going to lead to the same options anyway. All you get is slightly different reactions in people's speech craft. And uh, that's that's not that's not an ideal, ideal way you drive a story, I'd say. Because there are some games like Undertale. Oh, it was perfect time. I ended up back here. Because uh, I, I probably should go mining, I guess, because I need more stone. No, no, let's not go mining. Let's go back back home. I've got tons of stone home. More stone than I know what to do with. Basically, like, they, their games exist where you can... Where the gameplay is really intense, but you're also driving the story for where to go. Um, a good example is obviously Undertale. Undertale... That's why Undertale is just so fascinating. Because it, 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 it's... It manages to do that. Have really fun gameplay with the, the narrative. I, the only complaint I could see uh, with with regards to it being a perfect combination is that it's too much wait time. There's a lot of waiting and, and it doesn't balance out with gameplay enough. Anyway, just things things like um like visual novels, right? It's, it's I have a hard time calling those games cuz it, it you're you're still doing a pre-planned storyline that you really don't have control over, right? You say certain things but you, you, you don't really have, have control over that because it's still the developer that made that story. At least when you have actual gameplay involved, it's not while you're not controlling where the story goes, your skill is what's driving the story. Because you're able to play the game good, that's why the story is progressing. You see, that's what the key difference is. That's what makes a big difference between you choosing dialogue because if you choose dialogue, you're still just doing exactly what the developer has laid out. And it doesn't require a lot of skill. I mean, it probably requires some skill. I don't want to be discriminative when it comes to uh, that genre of games. It's just not one I personally enjoy because you're not you're not battling bosses to get to that storyline, right? If you lose against this boss, this storyline's not continuing. 
that's what it comes down to. You are the one who is actually driving the story, even though the developer laid it out for you. And that's fine. Uh, in the other games, it's kind of like, no matter what you say, the story is going to keep going, and it's going to be a story the developer made anyway. It's, it just matters on, like, dare I say, good and bad endings, which is also something I don't particularly enjoy. Telltale does a bad job with story games. Oh, that's the people who did Minecraft Story Mode, I believe. Because everything leads to the same ending, almost. While in Detroit, you hear actors complaining about the many of endings they had. Oh, okay. So, Grant, I should I should preface, I've never played Detroit. I've only I've only heard about it. And I was kind of talking about that genre in general. So, I, you know, it could be that Detroit is, is better than, than other stuff. Not fan in Detroit, I swear. No, no, that's fine. Also, this song. Wait. Which song? It just changed. I don't remember. Uh, it's not on the stream anymore, either. I don't know what song it was. I, you know, I'm so used to hearing these songs. I can I can go back though. I think. Oh, Mario Sunshine Davina Plaza. Ah, so you were a Mario Sunshine fan. That's good. Uh, yeah, that's a fun game for sure. Um. Yeah, now we're on to Pikmin. <laughs> and I lost I lost the chat window. Here it is. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I've never played Detroit, so I I can't be too hard on it. I was just kind of speaking towards that genre of games in general. Basically, when you if, if your story's done right, then you do drive the story through your, like, hard work and stuff like that. And when it's just completely dialogue-based, I feel like you're just going through a story the developer made anyway. And if that's the case, it's probably... It would probably be a better format as a movie. Because that's what a movie does, too, is it takes you through their storyline. You're not the one driving it, you're just sitting and watching. The characters are driving it. And that's what this genre is, is the characters driving the storyline that the developers made. This is, <laughs> this is like becoming a soda pop cast right here. <laughs> it's, it's not bad, but like, clearly I'm in the mood to talk about that kind of stuff. You know, you can, you could take Pat out of the, um, uh, last Friday of a month. No, wait, <laughs> you could take the pod, you could take the podcast out of the last Friday of the month, but you can't take the podcast out of Pat on the last Friday of, I don't know what I'm saying. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's just movies. They lay out a story for you, and the characters take it for you. Games like Detroit, again, I haven't played it personally, so I, I can't speak about it too much, but games like Detroit, that genre, you, you're doing the same thing. The characters are going, taking you through the story, except every once in a while, you choose a dialogue option, which to me is just not intuitive enough to warrant it being a game instead of a movie. I think that's my ultimate conclusion for it. Anyway, I was going to get some more stone. <laughs> Yeah, I've never played those. So I, I can't, you know, I can't talk too poorly on it. It, but yeah, like I said, like I've said many times, it's very fascinating by gameplay. Game designing is one of those things where I certainly wouldn't mind doing. It's not like my dream job or whatever. Not to say that I, I don't really have a dream job, but like, you know, when I think of stuff I'd like to do most, I usually think of being in like the, the, the movie industry and stuff like that. Uh, or even in YouTube, I wouldn't mind that for sure. But um, game development, you know, if, if the, an opportunity arises where like, hey, would you like to work on this game? I would probably like say yes in a heartbeat, just because I'm so fascinated by that stuff. And that's what's kind of cool about the map we're working on is that it really is giving me an opportunity to pursue game development in a small sense. It's like, because it, it really is, it's it really is a game, right? It's not for the map at this point. Why are there so many gosh darn barn animals in this nether hub? I, like, where? <laughs> Why? It's so annoying. Okay, get out of here. This dog, this dog used to be mine, but I can't click on it anymore because I'm no longer on that account. I'm on a new account. The pet underscore n account. But it's just here all the time. I don't know what to do with it. I feel like I should kill it. Maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. Get out of here. Cows I have no sympathy for. I made a freaking cow shop for crying out loud. Can't wait to work on that map again. <laughs> uh, let me let me say this. I've been doing some work on it. And um, basically, when we have the session, we're going to have a lot a lot to go off of, right? Because that's, that's one of the main things I do before these sessions. Like, I want to make sure that I don't waste your guys' time, get you on for a couple seconds, and it's like, okay, well... Like, now we have to wait for Pat to do, like, this stupid thinking again and stuff like that. So, I like at least laying out, laying out the, uh, groundwork so that people can know where to, where to start working and stuff like that. And I've been doing that and it's gonna be, um, 
it's gonna be a good session basically oh yeah minecraft i see is a good platform not game as much as as maybe i maybe used to see it yeah minecraft's really not a game and that's that's uh something i've been advocating for quite a while is that it's it really is a platform for other games um and that's why here's the deal i don't have the i always go to spotter's base on accident i don't have the best attent or the, the longest attention span when it comes to video games i really don't even just it might you might think i might because i play a lot of games um but i'm really one of those people who like to play a game usually beat it and then kind of be done with it um even with party games i can play it for a while and then eventually i'm just like okay let's take a break this game though is like one of the only games where I, because it's so deep i can not get bored by spending hours upon hours and upon hours inside of it a, a game that gets close is like smash brothers but even then a lot of times with smash brothers i'm just like you know, I played this game so much. I know all these characters. I know all these stages and stuff. And I play. I still play it every once in a while. But I also feel that way about like first-person shooters too a lot, like Call of Duty, um, Modern Warfare. I've played Modern Warfare a lot, and I don't think it's a bad game at all. But it's like, yeah, I've just, I've, I've done all this, you know. I've, I've been to each of these steps. Every, <laughs> every pixel on this map, I've already walked on. And I, and even though it's fun with friends and stuff, it's like. I don't I I just I don't suggest it anymore and I don't play for very long. But a game like Minecraft is is the one game I can fully get into and stay into. And uh, I like it that way. I like having just one game that I can completely indulge myself in. While everyone every all the other games I usually play once or twice, you know, every other year or something like that. Uh, I'm 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 very happy with that. But Minecraft, it's just so deep. I mean, any, anything can be done with it. And it's like, I can't even scratch the surface with how deep it is, so it's like, I feel like I shouldn't even try. But, oh, here's an interesting bug I've noticed. Um, if you're not in a crafting table and you and you shift click, sometimes it um, will close the window. Let's see if it does it again. It didn't do it that time. Sometimes it'll close the window, which is interesting. Uh, it's a 1.13 glitch, I guess. But yeah, um, being able to work on the map, because it really is a game, right? It's like, it's, it's based off a game. It's, it has every element to be another game. It's just using another game's assets. It's asset flipping. <laughs> so that's a great thing to say about your game. I am asset flipping. But, uh, you know, it's just, it's just cool that Minecraft gives you this opportunity to do that. Um, even if, like, the developing tools and stuff are not nearly as useful as actual developing tools... And Minecraft scoreboards will always be entirely frustrating. Uh, in Redstone, <laughs> too, for that matter. It's like, it's still cool that you can even, can even do it. And...
distract from what the game from what the game offers, in which case the Minecraft community does a lot, then I feel like you're too involved with the community. Just just de-involve yourself a little bit. Especially with a game like Minecraft where you really don't need to be involved in the community at all. For a game like Counter-Strike, it's a little bit more <laughs> a child's game. <laughs> but, uh, like, Counter-Strike, you need to talk to people to play that game competitively. Uh, you, you, like, have to. And if that is a really crappy community, and it's pretty bad, honestly, compared to Minecraft, though. It's a bit of a cakewalk. <laughs> Not a cakewalk, just, you know. It's, it's, the ratio is a little different, basically. Uh, but if that game had a really, 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 excuse me, bad community, then I could understand, like, wanting to stay away from it and stuff like that. But Minecraft is an amazing single-player experience. You don't need no community. You don't need no community. Just play the game for what it is. Don't listen to all those other people. Especially a game like Undertale. Jeez, the community of Undertale ruined it for so many people. And I'm like, guys, guys, just try to get your heads out of the internet for a second because you, there's no online for Undertale. There's no reason you're, you don't ever need to hang out with these people. You don't even need to tell them you've played the game. Just play the game quietly in your room, lock your door, don't tell anyone you played it, and be done with it because it's a personal experience. It's not multiplayer. And Minecraft's the same way uh, to an extent. You can play it single player and have an amazing personal experience. You don't need to have a community experience. Not every experience, here's a newsflash for people, not every experience you have needs to be a public. You can have personal experiences. And that's that's what Minecraft can do for it. Even here on the SP, even though it's multiplayer, I've had a lot of personal experiences, which have just been great. But I've always said, like, even if the server goes completely inactive, and at some points it might feel completely inactive, uh, even if it did, then worst case scenario, I'm playing single player. You know, I'm having my own personal experience, and I'm documenting that experience on YouTube, so it's great. That was also a great song, Super Mario Odyssey, sung by the one and only Pauline, Mario's original love. Oh, we got some Rainbow Road up in here. I think this is a remix of a lot of different Rainbow Road tunes. I think it's mainly the DS one, unless I'm wrong. It certainly has 64 in there too, which I know is the uh, revered one. And I'm not, I'm not saying disrightfully so, it's really good. I haven't heard them all to, to say it's my favorite, but um, Mario Kart Mario 60, Mario Kart 64, darn good music. That's something good. Hey, we should have had this conversation a long time ago. Mic check. Mic check. Is my mic off? Okay, let me check. Testing, testing. You're going to hear double That's a second. Long. It certainly has 64. In. My mic's on. Ah. <laughs> that may or may not have been in response to me talking about Counter-Strike. Okay, never mind then, right? Unless it just came out. Station a long time ago. Mic check. No, it's still going. Okay, you see, remember when I said like I don't like misunder <laughs> misunderstanding people? That's why. Freaking distract the entire stream and all thousands of my viewers have to deal with me staring at the screen for a little bit. Again, with the N64 stuff, Rainbow Road 64 is the most memorable soundtrack. I mean, that's very subjective, though. Most memorable. I'm not. I'm not trying to say it's bad, but like, it's memorable because you played it a lot as a kid. I mean, if you never played the game, it's not memorable to you. So that that adjective in particular is very subjective. But what I will say is that the soundtrack's really good, and I will remember it for a while. But uh, I also. <laughs> It's also weird, because, like, I don't think other it's inherently better than other Mario Kart tracks is a thing. Because, like, there's some darn good music in Mario Kart 8 as well. And it's all orchestrated, too, which makes it that much better. Uh, but, yeah, I, at the end of the day, it's a good song, right? And Mario's, Mario Kart 64 is definitely has good songs. Hmm. Cutting it close with this al Allium. All right, what is that called? Allium. Is this hidden in the biome, or is this not in the biome? It's pretty close. Let's F3 it up. We're in the flower forest. Walk closer. Planes. Planes. We've got an imposter. Get out of here. There we go. It is really good music, though. But like all the Mario... All the uh, 
I like the live music. And yeah, me too. I like it too. It's really good. Um, here's something that's interesting. I've heard some people say that the uh, Game Boy Advanced uh, Rainbow Road song is their favorite because it sounds intense, which is what... Don't prematurely go up hills without seeing if they're going to end shortly. Um, despite it... Because it's because it's really tense in the game, and the track is really intense, right? So it's really fitting. So I've heard some people say that that one's their favorite. But I think the general crowd favorite is uh, 64. It's really good. I don't blame them. This one is like a remix of a lot of them from Super Smash Brothers. Super Smash Bros. 3DS. Not the Wii U version. Very unfortunate that... Um, that there is such a difference between 3DS and Wii U at some cir circumstances because you have all these cool stages and songs that you don't get to experience in the Wii U version just because you didn't buy the 3DS version like most people didn't. Then again, not a lot of people bought the Wii U version. Well, <laughs> why does everything I say have to have an exception? Um, hey, let's move this way. That's a real question. I should just shut up sometimes. Sometimes I should just like, you made your point clear enough. Just give it up. You don't need to specify every single syllable. I'm sure that's what Trump says when he tweets, too. Anyway, we got a flower here. <clears throat> and this is not in the flower forest, right? Nope. So you're out of here. You're out of here. But. <laughs> we got a but. Thank you for sharing, Spotters. Uh, uh, that kind of commentary is the reason you're invited to these streams. Because <laughs> this stream is invite bases only. Only people who are invited can come. I feel pretty bad if someone joined like right then and heard that sentence and like, alright, well, I guess I'm out of here. <laughs> I don't want to be with this douchebag. Does I wonder if invite only streams exist. First place ever was on Cheese Moon Course. Oh, oh, you sent a lot of stuff. I'm sorry. Game Boy Mario Kart shall not be brought up here. What? Just kidding. It's lacking in many things and features. Feature-wise, it's bad. Interesting. But I have a soft spot for it because first place ever was on the Cheese Moon. Cheese Moon course of all places. Isn't that one, like, really hard, though? <laughs> I thought that was, like, a really hard stage. Man, I liked the... I was a fan of the... I was actually impressed by its, its features, specifically. Which is why it's interesting that you say that. Uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to, like, heavily dispute it, but I haven't played it in a while. But, like, uh, there was a lot of things I really enjoyed about that game. For one, the visuals were so clean, especially compared to the uh, SNES version, which is the other 2D Mario Kart game. The first Mario Kart game, too, so it's understandable for it to look worse. But I remember just being very impressed by the uh, Game Boy Advance's capabilities of running that, like, um, fake 3D terrain and stuff. Let's take another turn. And um, I, th I liked a lot of the stages, too. I thought there were some cool themes to stages. There's this one called Luigi's Runway where it's, like, raining, and you're, like, by an airport. And it's like, who comes up with this stuff? You're just driving by an airport. Later, Mario Kart 8 also did an airport stage, but it's, like, it was just kind of cool. And it's, it's raining, you see puddles on the ground, and um, you see, like, an actual blimp that as you get further in laps, the blimp gets higher in the sky and stuff. And it's, like, little details like that that made me um, have a soft spot for Mario Kart uh, Mario Kart Advance in general. I actually used to stream Mario Kart Advance um, a little bit. Not too much. Um, of course, I never stream too much, so that makes sense, but I, I did do, I did do some, a, a, a fair share of streaming because I was trying to get um, footage up for a video. That was, of course, it's scrapped because I have like hundreds of scrapped videos. Hold up. You know what I see? Look, you see this? When I see this, I think not okay. We need to fix that. Um, uh, bring back 2D Mario Kart games in 4K. Nintendo, what are you doing? <laughs> I know all those checks by heart, I swear. Uh, the, the Game Boy Advance ones? Some of them, like, I don't, one trend I'm glad they stopped is the repeating, like, themes for tracks, right? Because Super Mario Kart did that also, is they would, like, repeat tracks. And if I remember correctly, the Game Boy Advance one had, like, multiple cheese stages and multiple other stages. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that was the case. Uh, which kind of came off as lazy to me or just unnecessary either way i mean if those stages didn't exist at all i probably wouldn't think like hmm, there needs to be two or three more stages but uh the fact that they add they kind of advertise them as new stages in the select menu is kind of annoying again i'm not quite sure if that happened in in advance i feel like it did 
but that did happen in the um, original, and that's kind of annoying. We're on this song again, huh? <laughs> Why are we on this song again? It's on shuffle, I thought. I guess it just happened to get here again. Uh, should I skip it, or or you want you want to hear it again? I mean, if you want to hear it again, I can I can hear it again. That's the only reason the stream exists, is so that it's like a little Nintendo radio. I can't say that though, because that's actually copyright. There is a no, no. It's the actual one is Radio Nintendo. Aha! Found a loophole. I just call it Nintendo Radio, and we're good. Nintendo Radio is great. I actually considered playing it instead for a lot of songs, but um, or for for a lot of streams. But uh, it doesn't it doesn't have like my personal taste to it, like stuff that resonates with me specifically. Uh, it has a lot of deep tracks, and I have deep tracks too, but they're not deep tracks that resonate with me because the whole point of the playlist is for nostalgia anyway. Up to you, Famarino. I mean, hey, the song's pretty much almost over, so we might as well listen to it all by now, but it's a good song. You know what I'm feeling like? I'm feeling like not working on the ball anymore today. I feel like doing something else instead. I, uh, I don't know how long, much longer I'm going to be streaming, but I think while I still have a voice, and my voice does go down as the night goes, as you can clearly see by the end of the marathon, my voice was absolutely distraught. Uh, in fact, I'm going to drink some water real quick. Okay. Speaking of marathons. <clears throat> um, it's not really, not really a marathon, right? So not really speaking of marathons, but speaking of extra life and stuff. Uh, there may or may not be a another possibly two UHCs, one public and one Ultra K Core in November, because uh, that's when Extra Life has their like game day, where they ask people to come on and stream. Then the people who are watching are like you know they feel more inclined to donate and stuff uh, because it's on that day. So it's a cool system, and usually people do like 24-hour stuff on there. We're we're still not. We're still not quite um, physically prepared for 24-hour streams and stuff. Uh, we don't think we could we could raise that much if we were extremely extremely tired, like doing those late hours and stuff. Going to 18 was was pushing it pretty hard already. But um, uh, so yeah, I was thinking we could do though like maybe two UHDs and stuff, a public one and a Ultra Kick Core, since those two were, were the most popular. I can't believe I had fireworks in there. We have some in here? No, okay. Um, so yeah, in November we might we might we might do some some more charity UHC stuff. Probably two games, and then. To quote Shrek from Shrek Two, the 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 probably one of the best Shrek movies out there. But you can't talk about Shrek in a critical sense because of all the memes behind it. But to quote Shrek from Shrek 2 at the dinner table, it's a bit early to be talking about that, isn't it? The marathon was only... A, a future marathon a hypothetical future marathon comes up in discussion uh, quite frequently within the four of us it just it makes me wonder how different those endings are from each other because it might be 40 different but maybe their form of a different ending 
is just one line of dialogue different from another, right? Because, like, I, I think of um, Metroid Prime. Metroid Prime had a couple different endings for completions. If you, like, completed the game... So, like, if you beat the game without getting very much percentage, Samus would jump in her ship and fly away as the thing is exploding and then done. However, if you get a little bit complete, you jump on the ship and Samus will stare at the explosions for a little bit and then run. However... If you go even further, Samus will take off her... If you get 100%, freaking gas. Uh, Samus will take off her helmet and show that she's a girl. And that's that's the 100% bonus. So you get to see that... Wait, I've been playing a girl? <laughs> uh, and it's like... Those are three different ends, but those are just so similar to each other. So it's like... doesn't even feel very worth it going for the 100% for the sake of the ending. There's other reasons for going. If you're a completionist, that's completely understandable. This might be a bad idea. I don't have very many rockets. Let's see where it goes, huh? Uh, so yeah, I'm just curious how many Detroit endings are actually that different from each other. Again, I haven't played it. I'm not trying to, like, bash on a game I haven't played, but can't help but wonder. Um, some are nuclear, apparently. Right, I can imagine that. Some main characters can also just die in the middle of the thing. Well, that's pretty cool. I think, actually, yeah, I think I heard some people talking to podcasts about that. Uh, it was the co-optional podcast, I'm pretty sure. By the way, if you're ever looking for a crazy good uh, video game podcast, check out the Soda Popcast. But if you're looking for another crazy good one, uh, the co-optional podcast. One of the most popular ones out there, but it's it's really good. Um, of course, it it also had the, the late great host of Total Biscuit. Uh, may he rest in peace. Uh, he certainly brought a lot to that show that you can't find in other shows. But, um, what was I talking about? Detroit. Yeah, it's cool that there are nuclear options. But I'm, I'm pretty sure not all 40 of them are nuclear compared to each other. Uh, and again, that's not to, I'm not trying to devalue it. I'm just trying to, you know, just wonder. Just doing some wonders. A little bit of wonders. Some people might be wondering what the heck I'm doing out here in the nether. Uh, I'm going over to the ocean biome again. Because I didn't get quite enough um, coral and stuff. I should have been more prepared to grab more stuff. Because the stuff fills up really quickly. But let's just drop this, this, this. And allium. I don't really need a gas tier right now. Drop that. I already have a boat on me, so that's cool. Keep one stack of ender pearls. Do I really need two gold ingots? Guess not. SP's ended anyway. <clears throat> So yeah, I'm going. I'm going back to get more coral for a segment in the boat race that I've been um, beautifying. Ah, got some classic arms in here. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Um, another, another thing. Where's the frozen ocean? Is that the frozen ocean? That is the frozen ocean. So let's go over here. I try to avoid showing spoilers for my sky block, just because this is going to be archived and I don't. And I've already been talking about how I, I want to have a base that's half in water and half in ice. And uh, that seems like a great way to do it. Plus, I like the challenge of building on ice. That sounds like something I'd like to put upon myself. And there's more ice variation now with um, blue ice. So that's just one more block to the palette, you know. So that's pretty helpful. I also, I also have a history of working on ice buildings. In Terraria, I made this giant ice castle and um even in the map i i made this ice gate and stuff i'm a fan of just big builds made out of ice and stuff
I don't think very many of the extra stuff fans in actual coral. It's mainly the blocks I want. Oh, Lake Hylia from Twilight Princess. Mwah! Excellent song. Excellent choice. My shuffle playlist. Also, you should at least... Uh, you should test pickles with ice with four pixels this time instead of one. Ooh, okay. Okay, just because you asked me to, I'll do it. I'll go over to that ice biome. Since I'm going to need to boat there anyway. Uh, that's what I'll do. Good, good point. Because that, that was another thing I was thinking of. Like, ice is always so hard to build with because uh, lights light it up and stuff. But if I could use sea pickles for lighting and other features with water locking and stuff, it's a lot easier to get around uh, having water in a base. You know, that's nothing. You can, That can be done. So, obviously you can't water lock something with pickles and another block. But uh, basically, yeah, I, I would love to use pickles as well. It's so strange how there's something so influential to not just my childhood, but a lot of people in my generation's childhood, and you can't really explain it. Well, you can try to explain it, but you can't really explain it to other people why it's so influential. And to try to make them feel what you feel when you play certain games and hear certain songs again and stuff like that, that were from your childhood, that played a part in shaping shaping you basically how do you share appreciation for video game music to the general public how can you make them understand that that's an actual like there's actual substance to that or just games in general how can you try to how can you try to explain to an 80 year old that video game is an art form tender games three overworld songs maybe two lava songs two to three spooky songs one water song. <laughs> they only need one. I'm trying to. I'm trying to understand your joke a little bit too much. Maybe three of world songs. Maybe two lava songs. Two three spooky songs. Okay, that one might have been lost on me. My brain might be fizzling a little bit, but that's okay. Let's just grab some pickles and move on. It's just. It's just so weird that like. I don't know, you know, me, it, art, art makes people feel stuff. That's what art does. But if you try to explain to someone about video games making you feel something, or video game music, or movies even for that matter, sometimes that's it's just difficult. It's, it's difficult to translate. Some people it just doesn't really click. And then you hear songs like Lake Hylia, and you try to explain it to people why it's something special and it's something that can't really be explained at least not to the general public can't i guess i guess you can't really explain your experience to someone else fully that's what it comes down to I'm getting really tired <laughs> this is not my usual commentary i'm really tired right now I like this red coral. I like the texture of it. The, it looks a little leafy. Like this stuff's kind of bubbly. It makes it a little bit difficult to use. This stuff's kind of cool, but those are like really big gaps. But again, pretty cool that it exists. This stuff is pretty similar to red too, isn't it? A little bit more bubbly, I guess. But I really like the red texture. It looks nice. All Nintendo games seem to have a lack of diversity when it comes to water stages soundtracks. Um, now I gotta think of water soundtracks. Okay, let me think of my favorite games first. 
My brain is not working right now. <laughs> I'm trying to think of songs. I'm just having a hard time. Um, okay, wait, wait. Let's grab more blocks. Let's grab more blocks, huh? I already have all this stuff. Um, okay. Metroid, Metroid Prime 2. Metroid Prime 2. Tarvis Bog. That's a water level. Um, pretty spooky. Um, pretty gooey, if that makes sense. A lot of, like, organic stuff going on. Just like, what the heck is going on? Uh, hey, while we're on topic Donkey Kong 64, because this is a Donkey Kong 64 song, which is, this game is also the host of some of the greatest video game music out there. They have a water level. Gloomy Galleon. The music of it. Something like, It's so hard to remember music when you're listening to music. When you just try to think of other songs, you can't. Like, I'm only thinking about Frantic Factory now. I, I, I feel like, I feel like I can provide examples as to where water music is diverse in Nintendo games. But right now, my brain is not letting me. Maybe I'll, I'll write up a document and send it to you later or <laughs> something like that. <laughs> With, like, links to just different songs. I'm like, uh, clearly, this one has um, Mario-themed. And this one has Zelda-themed or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm really tired. Did I ever pick up... Oh, where's my shulker box? I'm the king of leaving behind shulker boxes. There it is. I picked up 50 blue ones, really? I don't remember doing that. When did I do that? I know it's great entertainment hearing someone sing along to a song as it plays in the stream. Okay, don't whistle. Never whistle on stream. Good rule of thumb. I can't help myself. This is a good song. It's a really good song. I need to sleep really badly. What blocks am I missing? Let's grab purple. I think I have purple here. Very much purple. What, what do I have least of? At least of pink and yellow. Get pink and yellow. Here's yellow. It's not very many colors, right? It's just pink, red, yellow, blue, purple. See you on the map soon. All right, take care. Oh, good night. <laughs> That's all I got. That's my good intro. I'm gonna get all this coral stuff. I'm gonna beautify the heck out of my bottom, my um, my boat race, and then I'm gonna go to bed. That's what. That's what my game. Way too much yellow coral. And some pink ones to balance it out.
Woo! Ugh. I have not been talking for the longest time. I'm gonna have to cut the street pretty soon. I'm just, I'm losing it. I'm so tired. I just wanna grab a little bit more blocks here. We could use some more purple here. Oh, we got a frame rate too. Oh, I, I missed one of the messages. My, would you look at, at the time? Um, I'm gonna head out. Good conversation points. Thanks, big. Oh, thank you, Spotters. I know you're already gone, but thank you. I uh, must have missed that message. Okay. I'm gonna pick up all these blocks and then I'm gonna end it. What I will be testing out though is that pickle thing Spotters suggested. Find out if pickles actually do produce too much light to melt the ice. Find out. Find out on the next episode of K Core SMP. On the next episode of K Core SMP, Pat completely loses his marbles and struggles to find it inside of his shulker box that he left somewhere that he cannot find. Okay, let's do that. I'll just wait right here and log off. <laughs> Alright. Thanks to everyone who came out and watching on the vid. Thanks to Spiders for chilling with me for a while. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm, my, I'm completely tired right now. I'm pooped. I'm absolutely pooped. But it was all for the meme. I mean the stream. All for the stream. Uh, we listened to some chill grooves. We um, did some chill moves. We built some chill walls. And we we mined a bit. We found some coral. We did some we did some fun stuff. All right, so that's gonna do it. Make sure you guys uh, make sure you guys I don't know eat vegetables or something. I'll see you next time. Goodbye, my fellow viewers.